and welcome to the Royal News Network Saturday morning live stream. I hope you all are doing absolutely fantastic this morning. We've had a lot and yet not so much going on. Obviously, Harry and Meghan have been in Canada for the Invictus Games promo for 2025. I think a year kickoff is not the best idea. I think they should do it a month out, maybe three months out or something, because a year is a long window for people to forget about things, to be quite honest. And so maybe they could do something, but like having it be like their whole pre-launch, like a year before the games is a little silly in my opinion. Uh, we also have obviously here Megan's fashion, kind of the whole thing becoming the Megan show. Still unclear why she's there. Harry's disastrous interview with Good Morning America. Oh my gosh, was that bad? It was so bad on multiple levels. Oh my gosh, it was so bad. But we also have some news that Catherine and William are still looking for a school for George. And so apparently they were at a school near Oxford. I can't quite remember the name, but apparently that might be what they're thinking about as well. So time will tell. So hopefully Catherine's still recovering. William will be at the BAFTAs this weekend. We also have a couple other things going on with Royals. We had the state visit to Norway from Tanzania. So we had a couple of pictures there, but not a ton because unfortunately, some of these more minor houses just don't get a lot of press attention. And so we had a couple other things going on too. So very, very exciting times. But obviously a lot of people will want to talk about Harry and Meghan because, man, I do. her la One of her last outfits of the trip. Ooh, that was bad. That was so bad. All right. We just have real quick. Jedi Mom has become a YouTube member. Thank you so much, Jedi Mom. I hope you are super excited. We also have John. Keep up the great work, Brittany. Why, thank you, John. I appreciate that. This morning, hope you are doing well. So we have one of our members, Maria. Good morning, Brittany and Ms. Pippa. Yes, Ms. Pippa is downstairs. She is probably going to be watching the neighborhood for me. D Development, good morning from New York. We have Kylar. Good afternoon from North Yorkshire, England. Hope everyone is well. Looking forward to today's stream. So I'll have the kettle on for my rose... Rosie Lay, see you soon. Brittany, hello. We have Allison from New York, one of our members. Good morning from NYC. It's my birthday. Happy birthday, Allison. Hope you have a great birthday. Thanks for starting it on a fun note. I am so glad. We also have Sarah. Good afternoon from Limerick, Ireland. I hope I got that right. Allison from Napa. No, was it Napa? Nampa. Nampa. Uh, we also have Amber. Good morning from Snowy. West of Virginia, we have Crystal from one of our members. Good morning from Central Florida. We have Blanca. Good morning from Arizona. Hello, everyone. We have another member, Becky, who is from Northeast Texas. Lisa from Louisiana. Oh, Becky wish, also wishes Allison a happy birthday. Very exciting. We also have Ludi from Chicago. Anna from Florida. We have Karen. Good morning, everyone from Northern California. I got secondhand embarrassment watching Terry's interview. I kept watching to see if his nose would grow like Pinocchio. Yeah, that was a bad interview. I mean, I've interviewed people. And here's the truth when you interview people. Sometimes the interview, the interviewee is good. Sometimes they're okay. Sometimes they're bad. Harry, in this instance, I think was a really a bad interviewee. But here's the question. Here's the thing, too. Sometimes the interviewer does play a part as well. And I think in this particular instance, Will Reeve from Good Morning America did not do well either. So you have a combination of very, very awkward. <laughs> it was like ridiculously awkward on both sides. Like, my goodness, this was bad, uh, especially the bit about his family. I don't understand why. If I, I guess Harry doesn't have a PR team anymore because that he does not represent by Demi and me, but that was a train wreck of an interview in that section in particular. I mean, he basically said he didn't care about his family. I'm like, dude, dude. All right. Susie has become a YouTube member. Thank you so much, Susie. And oh, we have, I just remember something as well. We had the report from the times and I'm so excited because guys, I found out that Kate Manasi from the times of London follows me on Twitter. <laughs> That tickles me to death. Um, just because I know I, I commentate more than I share news sometimes and those sorts of things. But it's nice to feel like I get, get a little recognition from one of the premier newspapers in the UK. But anyway, she dropped a story that apparently Harry was floating the idea of being returning as a part-time working royal or a temporary working royal. And I'm like, dude, no. <laughs> um Charles would be out of his mind to say to Harry, oh yeah, come back. Well, we'd love to have you back. Nobody wants Harry back. <laughs> Nobody wants Harry back. Um, Harry's the only one who thinks that. And I guess that was probably the reason he went out to visit his father was to pitch himself returning as a working royal. And I'm like, yeah, that ain't happening, bud. 
that is not happening in the slightest. Yeah, so that was that was an epic tree mug. But thank you so much, Susie. We also have just trying to get a couple more intros in here. We have Berkshire Lady. Good morning, afternoon from the UK. Can't make live, so I will watch it later. We have Pam Downs. Good morning from Austin, Texas. We have Ritz, another member from Chicago. Pam was a member as well. We have Elaine from Rhode Island. We have Leanda. We have Nana from Alberta. Oh, and we have another new member, Gina. Is it Gina? I hope it is. It has become a YouTube member as well. I am so excited. Thank you so much, Gina. And I am going to work on something for you all. Um, I think probably trying to get maybe a Discord together for the members here because I think um, that is something that would work really, really well. And then I'm hoping to have something else. Um, I, I asked. I was. I had a call with YouTube this week, and so I was hoping to. I asked them for something, and fingers crossed that we might get it. We also have Tracy who has become a new member as well. Thank you so much, Tracy. That is awesome. Okay, so let's keep going here with our little introductions. I think we have, I already said Leanda from St. Lucia over in the Caribbean. Uh, Nana from Alberta. We have Leticia from uh, Connecticut. Very snowy day, I'm sure. And we have Joe G from Australia. Good day. I'm sure it is very late for you though. So I hope you are able to get to bed soon. Not that I don't want you to join the live, but I know sleep is important. Uh, Kate says, good morning from Alabama. <laughs> and we have um, Katie from South Carolina. And we have Cheryl, one of our members. Good morning from Florida. Yes, secondhand embarrassment while from watching Harry speak. And Megan trying to speak um, is a very real experience. That is happening more and more. Growing desperation. Hmm. Yes, I think the growing desperation is very real. I actually did a whole video. I filmed it, but I had something. Um, I'm trying to go to a small group with church and stuff. So I was doing that last night because sometimes, guys, I overwork too much. So I try to take, trying to make sure I take a little bit more time for things. So I'm going to get that video edited um, and up to later today. Then I also have another one I'll probably do for tomorrow about the whole Harry wants to work as a royal again, what that means. Um, so I have a whole video on this frustration and like the desperation I think is really starting to hit them. The Daily Mail did a good piece today talking about particularly the deal with Netflix and how they have, you know, potentially maybe a $50,000 a month mortgage. And they got maybe at the most 15 million from Netflix, maybe 15 million from the Harry's publishing deals, very little probably from Spotify overall, and that they are probably starting to run out of money, basically, or that their life, their lifestyle they're leaving cannot keep up with the, the minimal amount they're bringing in. So the desperation is going to grow. So uh, Miss Louise, good afternoon from Bourneville, UK. We have Gina who became a member. Good um, afternoon from South Africa, where the Earthshot Prize will be later this year. Yes, that was another announcement that we got. And so I don't know. Um, I guess it depends on how this year goes. Because, you know, there's a part of me that kind of wants to go and cover it. But the part of me that's like, oh, it's really far. Um, but I'm tentatively thinking of a trip to Europe for May for a couple of engagements. And we'll see where that goes from there. We have Kaza, good mor after morning from North Carolina. What do you think of Harry's floating desire to come back as a working royal for a while? Oh my gosh. Um, and thank you for being a member. I saw that and I was like, well, A, it came from the Times. So the Times is a very reputable publication. So I believe it's true. And it seems like that was probably why Harry came over to the UK is that he came over and go, dad, I'm so sorry. You're feeling so sick. Oh my gosh. I, you know, me and Megan were really thinking about you. Oh, oh, oh by, by the way, if you need some help, we are more than willing, <laughs> I think is the message he got. And I, I'm sure Charles was like flabbergasted, number one. But number two, yeah, that's not going to happen. Like Harry and Meghan's favorabilities are so bad. They're so terrible. Like, and I think Eugenie and Beatrice's is ab abnormally low. I don't know why theirs is so low, except for the fact that, you know, they don't, they don't have as much a pro public profile. So I would think it would be incredibly beneficial actually for them in their public image to do, to be like part-time working royals or something like that, because I think the public would warm up to them a lot more, but people have opinions on Harry already. And the opinions, especially in the UK are broadly negative. So if the Royal family that you could say is, you know, it's, it's going through a rough time. And so why in the world would you bring the least popular person back for like a part-time role? Like that's just, but I think that's Harry. I think Harry's misconstruing Charles's desire for a 
personal connection with a royal one. So here, Charles is like, yeah, I want to reconnect. But that has nothing to do with you walking around and actually working as a royal. That ain't going to happen. But I don't think Harry's quite aware of that. So, and which is not a surprise. Again, not a surprise in the slightest. Oh, goodness. All right. Tony Black became a YouTube member. Thank you so much, Tony. I'm so excited you are joining. We also have, I think I mentioned Tracy, but just in case I didn't, thank you so much for joining, Tracy. We also have uh, a a comment from Jessica Reed, ascending healing prayers to King, His Majesty King Charles. Thank you so much for the tip. I do appreciate it this morning. And we also have another new member, Maureen Griffin. Good morning, Maureen. Sorry. I hope nose is a little itchy. Thank you so much for joining and becoming a YouTube member. All right, let's keep it going here. Okay, so we have Judith, good morning from Tennessee. I wish uh, CBS would, would ask um, Prince Harry how Invictus was started. I'm sure it wouldn't be the truth. Yes, and I know some people kind of go on and on about how, oh, it was part of the um, Prince William, uh, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge and Prince Harry Foundation. So obviously there were a lot of people involved and that is true, but I will say Harry was always the figurehead. He was always sort of the spearhead of it. So yes, other people may have contributed behind the scenes, but I don't think it could be argued that Harry wasn't broadly involved in some way. So Heather said, good morning from Ontario, Canada. Can't wait for another awesome live. Uh, we have, oh, Asima is from sunny Barcelona. Nice. Uh, as and asked, does Harry know the difference between facts and opinion? You learn it in primary school. He does not. And I would say too broadly, a lot of people in, publicly don't know either. But yes, he doesn't know. And he is very confused. I mean, his interview, again, cannot say this enough. His interview with ABC was awful. That thing was awful. in like so many ways. That's so bad. We have Susan. Good morning from Virginia. We have Asima. Good morning. Hi, Miss Brittany and Miss Pippa. Yes, she is downstairs. Oh, my little baby girl. Ruth Gritter said, good morning from snow cold and snowy Kalamazoo, Michigan. We have Jedi Mom from snowy New Hampshire. I'm sure it's a beautiful day. <laughs> Asma says, is Archwell done now? It sounds like pretty much yes. They've sort of abandoned Archwell as their overall brand. A, number one, it was a terrible name. It was a terrible name. Awful, awful name. Uh, nobody knew what that was. Nobody knew what that meant. It meant nothing. And it just seemed weird. I was like, well, our son is named Archie. And I was like, well, how did you get Archwell from Archie? Like, it just... Meghan Markle is terrible at naming things, in my opinion, in my humble, humble opinion. She is really terrible at naming things. And so... Um, She's not great at it. So it just didn't work. And so, and they're desperate to reestablish their royal connections. That's why they're floating the idea of returning to. Like they're desperate for, I, I think, and Harry and Meghan's minds, because again, they deal with a lot of delusions, I think. I think their big thing is they think, well, if we can get back in with the royals for a bit, that'll help us in our future business prospects again. And I'm like, no, most of the businesses have already seen you guys. So you guys adding anything won't help matters. <laughs> It won't help on matters at all. Lady Aviator said, greetings from cold North Alabama. Not surprised that Meghan Markle made this event all about her. The woman has zero shame and zero self-awareness. Yes, she has zero, zero shame and zero self-awareness. Um, because Meghan Markle did not wear a single piece of Invictus merch. I actually have. I actually have an Invictus shirt from 2016. This is my mug. It says, I'm the master of my fate. And I don't even feel like you've, you hear about this like phrase being a huge part of the Invictus games anymore. Again, the whole Invictus brand has been become the Harry and Meghan brand and becoming increasingly the Meghan brand. It's like, you guys need to decide what you're going to do because this ain't working. This ain't working. If you can't remember this poem that was part of it or whatever, then you've lost, you've lost all sense of, of self in this. All right. E. Williamson said, good morning from Arizona. We have Terry from snowy Philadelphia. Liz, good morning from Wisconsin. We have Becky McCoon. Good morning from snowy southwestern Pennsylvania. Elizabeth, good morning, everyone from sunny Manitoba, Canada. We have Missy Lulu. Good morning, beautiful royal peeps. Yes. And we have Wendy. Good morning. Good morning, Wendy. I hope you are doing well. We have Jenny from Portland. Liz says, uh, I think they are quietly closed Archwell because of charity rating and possibly IRS investigation. I would say no. Um, we have not heard any indications under IRS investigation. And technically, the foundation is still active. It still exists. It's just they decide their like overall brand should be Sussex. 
That's what they've decided. Um, Maria says, good afternoon from Italia. Yes. Uh, we have Cheryl from um, Cheryl T for, in Oklahoma. Good morning from Chile and Cloudy, Oklahoma, one of our members. We have Bettina from Kentucky. We have the wrong shoes of good afternoon from Belfast, Northern Ireland. Oh, it's so important to have the right shoes. Yes, it is. Wendy says, didn't Prince Philip renounce his Greek citizenship before marrying the queen? Elizabeth did. Mary renounce her Australian citizenship. Her children are dual citizens. So when it comes to Prince Philip, yes. And I mean, there were kind of complicated. And I think maybe, was he a German citizen too? I can't remember. Um, but yeah, definitely he renounced his, I don't know if it was his citizenship. I'd have to look. But he definitely renounced his other royal titles in order to adopt the ones given to him by the United Kingdom. So he did make that decision. Uh, regarding citizenship, I'm not entirely sure. But the Greek monarchy, I think, had been kicked out by that point. So they didn't really have a monarchy. So I don't know, again, the, the intricacies of that. As far as I know, Mary has not been required to renounce her Australian citizenship. Um, but I'm not particular on the details. I mean, her and her family go back to Australia quite a bit. So it could be possible that her children are dual citizens. I don't see how that would be potentially problematic. Obviously, we do have in Sweden, Princess Madeline, her children have been, she's had two, uh, one, one child born in the U.S. So I'd imagine Leonor is a U.S. citizen. Everybody born on the soil in the United States is a U.S. citizen. So that would include Leonor. She can obviously renounce her citizenship at some point if she wants to, particularly people have done that for tax reasons and those sorts of things. But she's a U.S. citizen. I imagine their kids are probably also U.S. citizens because Chris is one. Madeline, probably not. She probably doesn't feel quite the need to, especially if being in the United States is temporary. But I'm sure given that she decided at some point that she wanted to live in the U.S. for a period of time to get away from press speculation in Sweden. It's great, perhaps, that they can allow their kids kind of the same freedom because it is easier to move between two countries you're a citizen of rather than not. So uh, it, in those situations, I'm not quite sure the details. But again, um, citizenship is a complex issue. But I think it's one that can be easily resolved. And Megan definitely didn't give, give up her citizenship. And so, and if Harry gave up his citizenship of the UK, oh, 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 he could no longer be the Duke of Sussex. And ergo, Megan could not be the Duchess of Sussex, which she clings to desperately. All right, Jessica Reed, one of our members. Good morning from Chile, Wisconsin. We have Godzilla, Manstrup as well. Happy Saturday. Uh, Cheryl says, oh, don't forget to like the chat. Yes. Yes, and we have E. Williamson, Bonnie, and then we have Jamie as well. Okay, and let's go over here. Uh, Kayla says, good morning from Pensacola. I'll only be able to watch a little bit of the live, but I'll watch the rest later. I hope you're able to catch it. Should be good. And we have Kathy. Good morning, Brittany. I often wish their titles would be removed, but they never removed the Duke of Windsor's titles, and that makes me believe it probably won't happen. What do you think? Uh, I People make the comparison a lot between the Duke of Windsor and obviously Harry, and yes, some of the comparisons – do make sense. I think the big thing to remember too is that the Duke of Windsor was actually king for about nine months. He was not, he did not receive a coronation because his reign didn't, he abdicated before the coronation happened, but he was actually king. So for him to give up the throne is a much bigger deal than what Harry did. So because of that, it actually does make sense for the Duke of Windsor to have some sort of title. He was the former king. And it makes more sense for him to have security because he was the former king. He was going to be the future king for a long time. And so that makes more sense. But when it comes to Harry, Harry is constitutionally irrelevant. Yes, we talk about him a lot because it's important because he's bringing down the overall brand of the monarchy in the UK. But I would say overall, it's very important to recognize that the differences between the two and that I think it does make a lot more sense to strip Harry of his titles and or, or or they could downgrade them. I think the Earl of Dumbarton and the Countess of Dumbarton would fish, fit Harry and Meghan just fine. Archie can be a Viscount and Lily can be a lady. That just makes infinitely more sense than being a prince and princess of Sussex, a place that the two of them have never stepped foot in when it comes to the kids and probably never will. That's just stupid. It's just absolutely stupid. And I get that Charles is sick, but there's a reason why you nip this this kind of thing in the bud early so that if you do have, let's say, a health issue, a health crisis, you're not sitting there going, 
oh man, what do we do? I'm sick. I can't do anything, you know, or I don't feel like moving this forward. I was like, well, if you had taken care of it immediately instead of procrastinating, then it would have gotten worse. Then maybe you wouldn't have to try to figure this out while you're sick. You know, those sorts of things. Uh, Peggy says, good afternoon, Brittany, and thank you so much for the tip. So from my understanding, did Harry go back to visit his father for the 12 minutes he had him to say he wants to be a working royal again? That is absolutely crazy. Yes, I actually think that is what happened. Uh, based on the article we got from the Times, I think that's literally what happened. Harry got back on a plane, probably pushed by Megan going, we're running out of money. We need to like re-up our royal things. Like, you know, in, in vi I don't play video games, but I know, you know, you have your lifespan in video games and, you know, it goes down. And so Harry and Megan, they, you know, they start up here with their royal crown stuff and then their life force with the crown goes down and they're like, oh, oh we need to re-up it again. We can be part-time working royals, Charles, and then we can go like this again and more people will pay attention. But again, that's not how this works and it's not how it should work it it benefits the monarchy in absolutely no way to bring harry and megan on they are wildly unpopular they are obviously going to be in it for themselves and harry going well you know we're not going to ask for any money and i'm like but yeah some but somehow you in the uk will be paying for some aspect of this horse and pony show of harry and megan if this happens and yeah i don't i don't think charles it would uh, gosh if charles did any of that just Epic, epic train wreck. Epic, epic train wreck. A hundred percent. It's it's just such such a terribly bad idea. Such a terribly, terribly bad idea. Um, but yeah, I think that is what what drove him. They're like, well, maybe we can go over there. We can ask Charles, hey, Charles, yeah, you know, we're we know you're sick and we feel sorry for you, but 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 don't forget, we are two bright and shining faces that can come in when you need that. Yeah, sadly, that's Harry Megan. Always thinking about themselves, never anybody else. Okay, we have Gary. Thanks for all you do. Idahoans love Royal News Network. Why, thank you. I have been to your lovely state. It's been a while, but I hope you guys are having a great day out there. It's a beautiful area. So thank you so much. Linda Nash became a YouTube member. Thank you so much, Linda. I really do appreciate it. I can't wait for you to join our community and hopefully continue to grow it. Yes. Cause I'm super, there's like something I'm really hoping that YouTube can do for me. And if it can, it would be awesome, but I won't share until I know for sure if it can happen or not. Um, just can read. So it's sunny here too, near Madison afternoon. All I saw lady C speak last night in Horsham. Yes. I heard that she was doing a tour. So that is so exciting. Serena says, hello, everyone. Good morning from sunny South of Florida. Just returned from a nice local holiday for my mom's 73rd birthday. Well, uh, happy birthday to your mom. That is awesome. We have Wendy from Plymouth and Becky. Uh, <laughs> Meghan Markle and Prince Harry never fail to amaze me with their blatant ignorance. Are we sure Prince Harry is supposed to be speaking when all Meghan does is talk over him like she invented a victus? Embarrassing. Yes. Yes. I mean, I will give her props. She did not, she wasn't interviewed for part of the ABC broadcast. So I'll give Megan props, but still it feels like she is with, like, why is she there there? And what bothers me is that I feel like when she's there, his attention is partially dragged away by her because she can't be on her own. Like Megan, while Megan Markle is a wildly insecure woman, wildly insecure. Um, she masks it on all this fake bravado, but she's very, very insecure. Because a secure woman would be able to walk a couple paces behind her man, engage in other people in conversation, and let him shine. But she can't let him shine. Um, and because it's 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 um it's threatening to her. It's threatening to her to let him shine. So again, wildly insecure. All right, C L M M says, Good day and top. And top of yesterday's morning to you from the wee hours of sunny Queensland, Australia. Love your show and find you delightful. Why, thank you so much, Chloe. You are so sweet. I do appreciate it. I hope you have a fantastic day tomorrow and are able to get some sleep this evening. I was really hoping Catherine and William would go, be going to Australia this year because I really wanted to go to Australia. But sadly, 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 that won't happen. That will not happen. So but hopefully maybe next year. I don't know. We shall see. Gina says, if it's Saturday, then I'm with Brittany in a live stream. Hi from Las Vegas. Hi. Um, so <laughs> Jenny says these grifters drive me nuts. I think they drive everybody nuts. They drive everybody nuts. Asma says, Liz, no matter what, if Archwell is closed, the IRS will still investigate. I mean, per, I don't know if 
they're investigating. Catherine Fallon says, good morning, everyone from Mariana, Arizona. We also have Trina. Hi, Trina. Kath, how was Lady C? And we have Kathy. Good morning, y'all. Always great to hear from Brilliant Brittany. Oh, my, thank you. That encourages me. Um, and we also have DS. Good morning, Miss Pippa. Good morning, Miss Brittany. Hope you are all fine this Saturday morning. Yes. Susan says, can Harry as prince and Duke legally hold dual citizenship? So I will have to investigate this a little bit because I know at least Emily Blunt, and I can't imagine her totally renouncing her British citizenship, but she said that when she took, she became a U.S. citizen because, you know, you can't be dual citizen. She had to technically renounce the queen. And she said, you know, she was doing it on talk show hosts and they said, well, you have to renounce her, but you, you know, you don't really have to. Um, like you can, you just have to say it. You don't have to mean it. So if Harry did that, like I would have to look up and see for sure exactly what, but I'm, I, I'm sure he could hold both, but what would he be able, if he became a U.S. citizen, he could not hold a title here. So yeah, because we don't have that here because we're not a royal country. Um, Asma says, any news on Catherine? Apparently, again, she and William uh, went to some sort of school in Oxford to see about um, George. But other than that, we do not know how she is doing, which is fine. I know some people, I have somebody on my Twitter who keeps going, keeps going on and on about where is Kate? Where is Kate? I was like, well, she is at home recovering. If you've never had serious surgery, it it's, I mean, it's, it's hard to recover from. You don't feel like doing much. And especially if it's abdominal, I'm sure she's just slowly kind of getting back. I mean, she might've, again, not saying this is true, just the thought that, you know, she might be still having mobility issues. Maybe they had to actually, she had to be in a wheelchair for part of the tour or something like that um, because she's still recovering. So we don't know exactly her condition, but I will say just a quick story for me personally. And this was, I think the day after. Or so like I had left the hospital after my surgery or right before or something. And <laughs> I, um, I had broken my foot. So it wasn't like, I mean, it was major surgery, but not like in your internal organs. But anyways, there was this woman who tried to sell me a scooter for my foot, you know, cause they had those little scooter things you can use. And I just wanted to hurt this woman so badly. Cause I was in so much pain. I was in so uncomfortable. And this woman is trying to pitch me on a scooter. And I was like, please go away. <laughs> so in that instance, in, in my situation, it's like, I really feel for Catherine. Cause it's like, I was there. I get it. Uh, we have Lindsay. Good afternoon, everyone from Scotland. Hello. We still have a couple of spots left before we confirm our Scotland trip. So if you guys are interested in that and we also have early bird pricing there as well. I hopefully fingers crossed we will make it to Scotland this year. I can't wait to have three more spots, but I love Scotland. Can't wait to go back. Cheryl, has it started? Yes. Yes. It has started because obviously we have to go through some of what we've seen already. So we'll start going um, and looking at some of the questions. Uh, we have the wrong shoe says, I love that when they lose their titles, they'll become Prince of Princess Henry. Megan will get her feminist credentials by acknowledging her claim to fame and status is her husband's identity. That is true. Megan, like what? I don't know why this bother me, bothers me about Megan, but so, so does. It's like, so she is you know, she claims she's a feminist. And yet at the same time, she doesn't acknowledge that the only reason she's anywhere is because of her husband. Like she can be a feminist and acknowledge that. Yeah. My husband got me where I am, but no, Meghan Markle doesn't do that. Like you get the sense that she feels like she finally got discovered. <laughs> I'm like, but no, your husband married you. That's the only reason anybody cares. Only reason. <laughs> All right, Julie, thank you so much for the super sticker this morning. Julie, I really do appreciate it. I hope you have a fantastic day. And we also have Duchess of Nothing, one of our members. I like the handle. The longer the dupe and Duchess of Sussex, dupe and Duchess, I love that. Attach their shoddy behavior to the RF unchecked. The more I fear the credibility of the RF will be degraded. The late queen would have checked them further by now. Yes, and again, Charles, I understand and I appreciate his desire to give his son a way back. But he has to think about the broader damage Harry and Meghan continue to do this to the monarchy. Even the Telegraph admitted when they go places, they're sort of kind of pseudo representatives of the UK government because the royal family hasn't done enough to diminish that. And um, I go in my video that I filmed that I haven't edited and put up yet, but it's just like part of this problem is on the monarchy at this point. Like 
They're the ones who have to have the hard line, but Charles refuses to do it. And again, I appreciate him from a father's standpoint, but oh, still. All right, Chris. Hi, Chris from Sweden. Hello, Bernie from Snowy Sweden. Then I took both boys on ski trips when they were younger. Why doesn't Harry take Archie? No idea. There's a lot of ski places in California. I know people who live in California who love to ski. And they, there are a couple of ski places there. Obviously, you know, it would be more popular to go to like Utah or Colorado, but there's plenty of places. Like, I don't think they leave the house with the kids that much, really. Uh, it's so bizarre to me that we've never caught them like candidly out with the kids, really. A couple times, yes, but not much. But again, I always get the impression, and again, just my personal opinion, that Meghan Markle only likes the kids acting in a particular way, and she's not you know, if they are throwing tantrums or something like that, I don't think she knows how to deal with that. So she prefers to have them stay at home because she does not want to risk them having a temper tantrum that she can't control or people saying that really it's the nannies who respond to the children more than she does. So that could be it. But yeah, I don't know why they don't go. Harry went skiing. Like a lot of royals go skiing. Like skiing is a big part of the royal community, I feel like in general. Um, and so it's just surprising that they don't go. Um, I, I mean, I don't even know if they've ever been to Disneyland, which is right there in California. No idea if they've been to Disneyland as a family. Now, I hope they have, but do we know? No. So it's just kind of sad. I don't think they take the kids much anywhere. I mean, it's good they don't own Invictus just because it would become entirely about the kids. But I mean, just still. And thank you so much for being a member for six months. That's so awesome. All right, Siba, Meghan Markle's titles are from Harry. If he loses, she loses. Yes. Sometimes, though, I don't know if she understands that. Uh, she really doesn't get this royal thing very well. Um, it's That's been abundantly clear after a couple of years. Hannah says, do you think Harry wanted to, do, uh, to interview Putin and Trump to um, IPO says again, no, I think he genuinely is not a smart dude. And he was thinking that, these type of men really do want to explore their trauma. Like just the level of dumb there is, is quite astounding from Harry that, yeah, they don't want to do that. They don't want to do that. Um, because especially when it comes to Putin, like the, his entire premise is built on him being a strong man. So why would he want to reveal his weaknesses? And he's also, you know, a dictator and those sorts of things. So it's like the, the thing you don't do as a dictator is ever show your weakness. So yeah, he, like, you know, Putin was just itching to have a therapy session with Harry. And again, I think he, Harry fails to realize as well that not everybody is as obsessed with their supposed childhood trauma as Harry is. And Harry's childhood trauma really doesn't compare to a lot of people. Harry is just so self-obsessed and self, like self-inward looking and everything is really quite sad. Um, we have a couple of members. Hi, Catherine. I'm from Chile, Borboro. And we have, um, or Boro, and we have Catherine on Good Morning. So keep going. Huh? It's Megan, like Reagan says, hi, Brittany. How interesting is it to find an interview was by Will Reeves, Christopher Reeves' son. He has a personal experience with the father becoming a, para, um, a paraplegic from a horse riding accident. Yes. And I got the impression, too, that I don't know what went on. I don't know Will's normal style, so I can't say. Again, I will say the whole thing seemed rather awkward, but I, do, I think a lot of that was coming from Harry. But again, it was just sort of strange. You would think they'd have a better connection and stuff, but I think Harry and Meghan's team is just so like, you know, walking on eggshells that anybody around them also feels the need to walk on eggshells because it felt like, at least especially the section on family, um, he was walking on eggshells and it literally seems like in the video, if you watch the beginning of it, that somebody like shoves Harry to will. And it's like, you have to go and do this part of the conversation because I think a strong reason why ABC went out there wasn't necessarily because of the Invictus games, but because of the Royal drama, because that's all Harry and Meghan have to sell, or that's all the people find interesting of them to sell. So they have to go and they have to do that. Kath says, sorry, one and a half hours and there was an interval. She has updated her Megs and Harry book thoroughly recommend. Oh, this is from about, um, 
Lady C. Crystal says, do you think um, they are using scripted content on their projects as to avoid a potential lawsuit since they lied on, on their documentary? No. They, I, they, We've heard before from other reports that they have some scripted things that they've been working on. But I don't think, I, I think Netflix is dragging their feet and giving them small amounts for pre-production and stuff or just even exploration, but not giving them the green light to actually produce something. Because again, their stuff has been pretty bad so far. Pretty bad. Pretty bad. Oh, uh, we have Luna Joan, one of our members. It's rainy here in Florida. Oh, uh, Susie says hi there, Brittany XX. Love from North Yorkshire. Hello, Miss Pippa. Woof, woof. Yeah, we might hear her woof, woof. We'll see. Jackie. Hi, Jackie. I hope you are doing well. Hi, Brittany. Hope your family are well. Miss Pippa, too. I'm staying to join, staying up to join the chat live from Western Australia. That is awesome. Jackie, I hope you have a great day. Jackie was on my first trip to the UK I got to do, which is so exciting. Cheryl says, I've been watching several videos of Queen Camilla. I have to say, I've changed my opinion of her. I think she's a benefit to the monarchy. Yes, I think Camilla is absolutely 100% lovely. Yes, you could talk about all the terrible stuff that went on with Charles, Diana, Camilla, all, all that stuff. And all that stuff is still true. The stuff, um, her behavior was not great. And neither was Diana's, neither was Charles. It was all bad. But I think she is a great asset to the monarchy. CLMM, who became a member, said, oh, no, gave a tip. Sorry. Uh, ah, I finally caught a live stream from Australia. Missed the start. Was watching a rerun of yours. Aw, hey, thank you. Alicia says, I think Megan was trying to step Harry for a divorce. She'll say that she works so hard trying to get sponsors. Yeah, especially now that it looks increasingly like Megan is taking the lead in all like financial stuff. Yeah, because Harry has a big nothing sandwich going on. We also have, it's Megan like Reagan. If anyone could ask a question about families coming together during illness, it would be Will Reeves. Yes, and Harry did something where, if you've never had media training, I have. One of the things they say is kind of like bridge. So they ask you a question about one thing and you can bridge it to the thing you really want to talk about and bring it back. So Harry sort of did the right thing, which was he asked about reunifying with the royal family and Harry brought it back to the Invictus. But at the same time, the what's happening with the people with the Invictus games is completely different than Harry's situation with his family, where Harry disparaged his family for years now at this point. And it's like talking about family reunification. It's like, but you've damaged a lot of the trust in your family. Like it's different if somebody has, you know, PTSD that's resulted in addiction issues, something like that. Yes, there is damaging there, but you understand that it was the damage of war or whatever that led to particular situations. It's not like what Harry has done to his family, which is publicly malign them internationally multiple times. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Anna says Harry ain't and never was or will be the prince uh, the same as the rest of them. The real royals live in Australia. Um, so why not try interviewing them? Yeah. Seba says uh, the GMA interview was a train wreck. Yeah, it was bad. It was really, really bad. And them trying to like happy talk it later. I'm like, oh man, that's just so awkward. <laughs> it's so awkward. Oh, uh, Chris, thank you so much. Chris, for the tip. Brittany, do you think the ad... Um, Adaption of the Sussex as a family name on the website was a preemptive strike before Charles or Parliament could remove their titles. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that was like, I think they're genuinely starting to get a little worried that all their stuff really will go off the rails in a really negative and bad way. And so I would not be surprised if that was part of the motivation. It's like, well, if we claim Sussex now, can they take that away from us? And I'm still not entirely sure. I don't think Megan can use really Sussex as a surname. Like again, legally, her name is still Rachel Megan Markle. And I, I understand the kids can use it. Like at school, Archie can be Archie Sussex and Lilibet can be Lilibet Sussex or whatever. But again, it just seems really, really odd and like they don't know what they're doing and they're just desperately scrambling, trying to like wrap everything around Sussex. So that if, if that title does get taken away, they can be like, but, but everything, it's, a, it's all in Sussex. <laughs> and hopefully that gets going and they're like, yeah, but no, again, I think Dumbarton would be like the perfect thing to do. Um, other than that, they would be Princess Harry, Prince and Princess Harry. 
and Megan could still use Princess Harry, but she could not be Princess Megan. And that would be, have to be clear. But I mean, even the ABC interview, they went over like way over the top calling him the Duke and Megan Duchess of Megan, like just call him Megan and Harry. I, I mean, I guess they demanded that the people who work for them at the Invictus case, Invictus games, call them sir or ma'am. So, I mean, again, they are so up in their own egos. Like they need their bubble to be burst a little bit. Like I think behind the scenes, again, I think it's starting to get burst or it's, scar it's starting to, the air is starting to slip out, but they need somebody to really go over there and poke it because their ne egos need to take a hit um, because their egos are out of control. So Marion says, good morning. If for some reason, William had to step and become regent or king, how do you think he'd do? I think he'd do great. I don't think, I think sometimes the best thing for certain positions of leadership is to not necessarily want it. And I don't think William is like, yeah, I want to be king. Kind of like Harry does. No, William is like, I'll be king when it's my time. But I, you know, he wants his father to shine. And it's, I wish William would pick it up a little bit more in terms of engagements, even especially now that Charles is sick. Obviously, the kids were on half term and everything. But at the same time, I also feel like William doesn't want to step on his dad's toes either. And William knows he's naturally more popular than his father. So it's it's hard. So um, I give him props for that. It's, again, not an easy situation. Uh, Trina says that interview was so disingenuous, especially about the family. And I must say, I was glad they got booze from my fellow Canadians. Yes. Yes. And I think they got a little mocking, call it, you know, singing God Save the King and stuff. Like they definitely, I mean, the video I saw of them leaving locations and stuff, like the reception really was pretty muted. Like there weren't like screams and like, ah, no. But maybe people don't do that anymore. AJ says, good morning uh, to you from... Uh, from afternoon in Norway. Hello. Hoping to get to Norway this year for the, the tour that the Danes are doing um, to Sweden and Norway. I'm really hoping to cover that. Apparently there's some, the Invictus is doing something that month too. So it might be um, a cool thing to cover as well. So I'm hoping everything kind of, cause there's a big gap between the two visits. So I was like, Ooh, maybe I can do a couple things. Cause I like to go, if I'm going to um, Europe, cause it, you know, it is expensive flights and everything and, um, you know, hotels, everything does, it does add up. Um, but, uh, I was really, it's nice when I can kind of encompass multiple events in one, in one trip. So we have a gibbers, a king, and thank you so much for the tip to Valentine low, please investigate contacts between the IGF foundation and the delusional duo or just Sperry. Yes. Valentine low is a fantastic reporter. He's again, one of those traditional reporters where when I interviewed him, he was, you know, very, I would say diplomatic about Harry and Megan. Like he, you know, got the dirt, but at the same time he was diplomatic. So I, I, I give him mad props for that. I think he's a great reporter. He has retired though, sadly from the, the times. And so I'm like, Oh, Janice says in that interview, I thought Harry came across as evasive and miserable. He looked awful. Yeah. Did not help either that he was in the shadows. I don't know who set up that shot, but just from a composition standpoint, that was a really bad shot. It's a really, really bad shot. So, so, so bad. Yeah. Uh -huh. Michelle says, I caught a live stream and good morning from Northern California. Good morning. I know it's early for some Californians, but Trying to find a good time that works for everybody around the world is not easy for sure. Sugar Cookie says, good morning from a suddenly snow-covered rural Ohio. I hope you are able to manage the snow. I'm not a big snow fan. Like, I like looking at snow. I don't want to be in it, though. And I don't want to drive in it. Just want to stay home. Um, <laughs> uh, Shatana says, I don't think King Charles wants to be killed off before he dies, which is why I think he's not sharing the type of cancer or stage yet after these rounds of treatment and improvement. Yes, I actually do agree with that because I'm, I was wondering when they didn't say specifically if the prognosis for that particular cancer wasn't generally very good and he didn't want people to be like writing him off before he even like things even got started. So he's like, yeah, you know what? We'll keep this on the town low. So people just don't, don't know what's going on. So, I mean, yes, it would be nice to know just because it, it satisfies our curiosity. Yet at the same time, I totally understand Charles's reasoning. All right, DS, thank you so much for the tip. Prince Harry is a classic prodigal son. Do you think he, if he divorced Meghan that in time he'd be welcomed back by the people of the UK, much like the Bible story? I think there's always a possibility of that. I will never, I try to deal never in absolutes 
because, you know, people are complicated and situations change in a way you don't expect. But what I do think is something to consider as well is that Harry, I think, will have to apologize to the British people. I don't I don't think he should be able to just be waltz back in as if nothing's happened. He needs to recognize his fault. He needs to recognize that he contributed to this catastrophe and that he was wrong. And pretty much everybody in his life was right when it came to Meghan Markle, including the British people. <laughs> I think he does need to do that until he does that. I like he he just again needs to like he needs to be welcomed back personally like within the family but when it comes to the public like he took advantage of pretty much everybody in the public eye and you know they need to he needs to well and especially actually his family too of course he needs to apologize for them but i think sometimes when it comes to at least our society it's like it goes a long way to apologize and recognize fault. Like I always appreciate people who recognize fault. There was actually something that sticks out to me from my high school graduation. And I did a couple of years of community college for my last two years of high school. So I wasn't at my high school that much, but uh, apparently one of my, my, um, one of the people in my class died. I, I didn't really know him, but I love that his parents came up and it was, it was some sort of event at the end of the year. And they went, well, you know, our son, he, he wasn't a saint and I was like, good for you. <laughs> good for you. Like it's, I think sometimes when people die young, we tend to overly sanctify them. And I, I, th I, th I was so appreciative of us, even, you know, even as a high school graduate, I thought that was so cool that they recognized that, you know, they loved him. He was great, but he also wasn't a saint. And cause none of, none of us are. <laughs> so it's always, I think good. I, I think there's something true to recognizing. I think people latch on to people who are generally remorseful of their behavior or generally recognize their fault or the faults in others in the case of those parents, but and generally recognize faults in a good way, if that makes sense. So it's, it's possible, but he will have to, uh, it won't be an easy thing. He'll have to take some time and he can't, he cannot just jump back in and act like nothing happened. Then definitely he cannot do that. And Cindy, thank you so much for the super sticker. Cindy, you are so kind. I do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> Pem says, it's being reported Harry has offered to return temporarily to royal duty. Shouldn't this be enough to make William step up and with all his nanny drivers, cooks, households, nurses? Yeah, I would think, um, it, well, it's not just that William can step up, but that this, something needs to be done about Harry. That Harry even thinks this is possible is crazy to me. It's absolutely crazy that he even thinks this is possible. But again, Harry is not a bright guy. So, and again, I think he's misconstruing Charles' de I desire for a personal reconnection with the reconnection to the monarchy. But the monarchy can survive without Harry, as it's done so far. Yes, this is a period of challenge. Yes, hopefully William will step up more. But Harry is just, yeah. It's, it's not going to happen, Harry. I know. I know. But I'm sure Megan was like desperate telling you, you need to go there. You need to pitch this because we need the money. All right. It's Megan. Like Reagan says, um, the same PR team told Megan to wear $150,000 jewelry at any time and a $3,000 Hermes coat, which is ugly. That was an ugly coat on like all levels. It's like a bomber jacket and it's reversible. The reversible side of it. She wore the, the plain side, but the reverse side is ugly. And the coat itself is not, is, is like, I didn't think it was flattering at all. I thought her assistant looked better. I was like, my goodness, just because it says Hermes on it doesn't mean it's good. But she buys things just because of the label. I mean, we all do it to a certain extent, but generally I try to buy things I'm pretty sure are going to look good on me. Sacred Stone card says, hello, Brittany, love your content. Why, thank you. Why is the engagement ring back? This is from Sue. I don't know because it should not take a full year to resize, you know, redesign, whatever. I think it's to reinforce her royal connections. I think that's why she's wearing it again. Because um, I think she took it off to punish Harry in some sort of way. And she's putting it back on because they are getting to the point now where they really need to reestablish that Royal connection. And she's like, well, I'm going to put it back on for now. Cause there's no reason I looked it up. It should take one to three days to get a ring resized. No reason why her ring should have been off her hand for as long as it was. Diaz says if Prince Harry becomes a U.S. citizen, will he use his tiles? Yes. We do not have Royals here. 
Uh, Missy Lulu says Harry is desperately thirsty. Shows he must be have begged Charles to be an official royal again. Yeah, I think so. I think so. One hundred percent. Um, and it so it was this morning, Brittany. How are you doing? I am doing well. Been busy this last week, but super excited to get another video together here soon. And American Woman says, is it true Canada booed the Dashley duos? Yes, there was a little bit of booing in some of the crowds when they were leaving part of the Whistler event on the first day. But it was pretty minimal, just a little bit. It wasn't like everybody went, boo! There was a couple of cheers, a couple of boos. But it was overall, I think, a very muted response. Pia says, good morning, Brittany. Good morning. Roxanne says, love you, Brittany. Roxanne from NYC. Why, thank you. <laughs> Alicia says, if Charles accepted Harry as a working role, everybody would think he would lo he lost his mind. Yes, yes. People, everybody would think he lost his mind and that he, the medication needs to be adjusted or changed or something. Like, yeah, it was just, again, dumb idea. Dumb idea. Erica says, good morning. So happy to finally make a Saturday morning live. Why, thank you. Yes, I'm so glad you were able to make it. We have Patricia, hi from Ireland. Thanks for doing such a good job, Brittany. Why, thank you. I appreciate that so much. Okay. So Megan, like Reagan says, the engagement rings looks like the stone got an upgrade. What a shock. She redesigned her ring because she always hated it. Yes. She, Megan Merkel has always hated that engagement ring. Um, she has started designing it. I mean, I think it's probably the same. It could have been an upgrade, but again, still, that doesn't make sense why it was oh, like off for so long. It still doesn't make a ton of sense. Snaz says, I made a live. Thanks for <laughs> thanks to my dog barking, barking at possums at 2 a.m. Love this channel. Love from Australia. Oh, my thank you. I'm so glad you can make it for a little bit. I'm sorry you got woken up. My parents are watching my sister's dog uh, for a couple of days, and apparently she woke them up at 4.30 yesterday morning, <laughs> and she wanted to go potty, and then she was up for the day. <laughs> My dog, guys, oh, I've trained my dog Pippa so well. She's sleep in the morning, she just sleeps with me. She just lays on I she she sleeps actually off the bed. Um, and so she'll come in and she'll cuddle with me on top of the bed in the morning. But usually most of the time she sleeps as long as I want. The other morning it was like pretty late and she was having a dream because I could hear her little her little doggy noises as she slept. And I was like, oh, sweet baby. American Eagle says, uh, man, all the news out today saying RF accepting Harry back as a royal. How mad is this? Please say it's not true. It's not true. Uh, Harry wants it. Charles wants, I think, a relationship with Harry. Doesn't mean he wants him back as a royal. I mean, again, like somebody said here, um, and I forgot who it was. Like if they welcomed him back or had him working, everybody would think the monarchy had lost their ever loving minds. Like it would not go well. There's no scenario where that would go well. No scenario. Melody says, excited for another live stream. Love your insight. Why, thank you. <laughs> it's Megan like Reagan said, but he did finally wear something Invictus, but only during the interview part when he's discussing his father's health. Yes, he did finally wear an Invictus puffer jacket. Still wondering why those aren't made for women. Megan, oh my gosh, her outfit yesterday was particularly awful. But yeah, no single Invictus merch. I don't understand why. It's especially when you're there to promote the Invictus games and Megan is not important in these games, but Lorraine Hughes Smith says, hello, Brittany and everyone. It's very hot here. Oh, no, not, hopefully not too bad. Larry says, I hope Catherine and Princess of Wales use the situation from the monarchy. Uh, that's not definitely what is happening. So she is perfectly fine. She is recovering from abdominal surgery. All right. Lee, Liz E said that the amount of money spent on the wardrobe could be paid for participant travel and hotel or specialized equipment if she was a true humanitarian. Yes. And I don't think really Invictus is really um, funding all of her wardrobe. But again, they probably paid for the private jet. Why? Harry and Meghan don't need a private jet. They are perfectly fine and capable of traveling non-privately. Um, and I think the bigger problem to me is, you know, let's take out the question of the fashion because we don't know for sure. But I think the big, big thing is, is if this the Invictus Games is becoming a personal promotional vehicle for Harry and Meghan, not a dime should be spent on it unless it comes from Harry and Meghan and the Invictus Games Foundation. Right now, this thing is entirely supported by corporate donors. Corporate donors, then government of Canada. That, if, 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 but that works if it is about the Invictus Games. But this whole wacky tour has proved that the Invictus Games is about Harry and Meghan. And again, that's just a huge, massive, glaring, glaring problem that it just seems like they can't deal with. They just can't seem to deal with it. 
So it's just, <laughs> it's, it's just not going to work. Uh, Hannah says, why do you think Megan looked white the first day this week and or orangish brown the next? Because she likes that bronzer quite a bit. Yeah, I don't know why she, I mean, she, again, she tries to increase her ethnic look a little bit sometimes. And so, yeah. <laughs> Jen, Jen says, I can't wait for Catherine to come back. I'm so tired of only hearing about Harry and Meghan. Yeah, I would I mean, it would just be nice to be able to cover the other royals from time to time. But, you know, it's, um, I mean, I do have an idea for that, actually. So hopefully we shall get that here in the future. But, um, yeah, we shall see that soon. Oh, Mama Otter, thank you so much for the tip this morning. Can our members from the UK clarify are the their HIPAA rights in the UK? HIPAA guarantees privacy and medical info with fines and penalties if violated. Yeah, that would be interesting. I imagine they would. But yeah, if anybody from the UK wants to chime in in the, in the chat box down there and let us know, that would be awesome. I imagine there would be. But... It all depends too, because we definitely want to make sure Catherine's health and everything is, is protected. I know there's some rumors going on on different sites and stuff like that. And, you know, I can see where some of them are true, but until Catherine says, it's like at the end of the day, like, it, and I think sometimes too, it comes from just personal experience, having had surgery myself. Do I tell people about it? Sure. Um, do I tell them everything? No, but like, it's at the same time, it's like, it's, it's an interesting story, but also too, these are like limb breaks. I feel like if it was something internal, I'd be less like, yeah, I had this done. Um, <laughs> Elaine Walsh said, did Invictus Cave for Megan's closing? See, she wore a $3,000 jacket money that should go to the games. Um, the jacket is from last season. So most likely Megan didn't buy it for the Invictus games and the Invictus games didn't buy it for her. But the issue remains is it's becoming a personal vehicle to promote her and Harry rather than to promote the games. And so if that's the case, no, not a dime should be spent on the games by anybody, but Harry and Megan and the Invictus games foundation. If it is, that means it's again. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Uh, Aletha says, thank you so much for the tip. I think that's why William made it clear that he was not meeting him. Keep up the good work. Why, thank you. Yes. William definitely is not going, yeah, Harry, come back. Come back. We need you back. I mean, I think in another world, in another situation, we could have a Princess Madeline situation where somebody leaves the working royal fold, decides to live in a different country, but maintains good relationships with their, their home country. And it can be called on from time to time to assist or offer assistance. That is what Madeline of Sweden does. She represents Sweden from time to time locally around Florida, sometimes in other places, but mostly in Florida where she lives. And But she doesn't do it a lot, maybe once every couple of months. And she can go back to Sweden and she can still be a working royal if she needs to. And if Victoria, let's say, was sick or out for a long period of time, I imagine Madeline would come back in and she would work for the royal family for a bit. Um, I think that's perfectly, perfectly appropriate, but, um, Harry made that impossible. Uh, Liz says, I like Beatrice, but heard stories regarding Eugenie from NYC friends that made me, made her suspect too for me. Yeah. I mean, I've heard varying stories about them, but I think, I think seeing them as working royals would be, would be helpful. Uh, Sir Kel says, I totally disagree with you, Harry and Megan are perfectly aware that they are not royal. They are betting a hundred, a thousand and one percent that 99% of the world is not aware of this fact. Yes and no, but yeah, the, their delusions are pretty, pretty bad. Sheriff from Tennessee says that was one of the reasons I thought Harry might've visited because he's delusional personality disorder and still is in line of succession. He thinks he has a shot at the crown. Yes. A hundred percent. It's just, yeah, it's wild. Um, CLMM says, under what circumstances would Megan become Countess of Dunbar and love from Queensland, Australia? So if Kath, oh, so if Harry's title gets demoted to the Earl of Dumbarton, then she would become the Countess of Dumbarton. So that is how that is how that would work. Again, better than her trying to, because she would be technically Princess Harry going by Princess Megan, which she I'm sure would do. DP says that interview was cringe without a teleprompter. Harry is an emperor without clothes. Yeah, he really sucked at that. That was an awful interview. Again, and he should be able to do an interview like that. If he can't do it, if his his PR team can't get him to do that, then they need to pull it. I don't know. Just from a 
PR standpoint, I don't understand. Uh, Heidi says, I wonder if Harry is pushing being a part-time royal so he can get security back. Yes. I'm sure he would go, well, if you let me be back as a part-time working royal, well, I would bring my kids. <laughs> I'm sure that's what he was thinking. And I'm like, dude, no. Oh, so bad. Um, so, <laughs> uh, ne ne Neely says, um, Harry and Meghan are just royal pains in the butt to the royal family. Yes. And to most of the public as well. Um, Megan says, Megan really tried to, um, hard to let him, um, do it this solo, except for the obligatory covering her giggle with her hand in front of her mouth posing. Yeah. She, she really tried, but at the same time too, she can't, she just can't totally help herself. But I think really trying would have been staying home. <laughs> Jessica Reed says, how do I change memberships levels? I'm actually not sure. I'm actually not sure. Um, you can maybe Google it. I don't know. Um, Megan's mask says, why do you think the ring came back? I think the ring came back because they're really trying to reestablish the Royal thing. And I think she sees that somehow as a reflection of her Royalness or something. Cause again, it doesn't make sense that it would take nine months to resize or re recreate a ring because, um, her, she, she did that much faster after the birth, birth of Archie. So it just doesn't make any sense. There was some reason why she wasn't wearing it. <laughs> uh, Gina says, hello, I was finally able to get to this live. Love your vids. Do you think their new brand will work better? Yes and no. I think Harry and Meghan's overall problem is Harry and Meghan. So I don't think changing it to Sussex will really change that. But I will say it has better name recognition. But... Archwell, I don't think was a make or break. What I mean by that is nobody really cared about Archwell. So everybody knew them personally already. So why would bringing Archwell, like eliminating Archwell change things that much? I just don't think they will. Nancy says the pair have made bad decisions since the day they got married. They could have had it all. Yes, yes, 100%. They could have left on really, really good terms and they could be back in this situation potentially, but they didn't. And so they can't. <laughs> Books and Coffee with Tara says, love your commentary, Brittany. I see short showing Eugenie seemingly giving Princess Catherine some shade. Any insight to this rift? Now, I've heard a couple of different things, but one thing that I actually did hear, I think it was regarding Beatrice, and it actually is not a good story for Catherine necessarily, is that Beatrice was invited to a party Catherine was putting on. I think it was with her roller skate disco, and Beatrice was told was not told that it was a fancy dress party. And so she didn't wear a fancy dress. And so, which means basically dressing up in costumes. And so she was a little bit frustrated by that and left. So in some ways uh, there has been maybe some bad blood between them, but um, I think at this point, most of that is done. And again, they could, they could do it. Oh yeah. I forgot Megan's new deal with Lemonada. You sort of feel sorry for Lemonada. They have no idea the toxic toxicity coming their way. Yeah. <laughs> Well, they seem to think that Archwell is Arch archetypes is gonna sell. <laughs> you almost feel sorry. Like I'm like, you guys think archetypes is gonna sell? Like really, really? Because uh, I just found found that hysterical. Because um, archetypes didn't sell for Spotify, and that Spotify let it go. Like let's say Spotify had the the exclusive rights to archetypes, and when they let the deal go, they still held them. But when Lemonada came around. Spotify is like, yeah, yeah, sure. Take it, take it. We don't care. You know what that tells me is that Spotify still was not making any money off of archetypes. And so when Lemonada came by, they're like, yeah, sure. Go wild. <laughs> Good luck with that. Um, again, and it was a bad, bad name or not a bad name. Sorry. I was looking at a different comment. It, it was a bad podcast. Again, bad podcast. Not, not even caring that was Megan's podcast. It was bad. I wouldn't have listened to it again, except I had to. Uh, Duchess of Nothing said, was their beagle named? I think it's Bogart is the name of their beagle. Uh, one S says, uh, that was a bad interview by ABC, same network that employees employed Omid Scoby and at one time Martin Bashir. Yeah, it was a bad interview. Will, did, I'm sorry to say, no offense to Will, but he did not do a good job. Now, I don't know. I haven't interviewed anybody like, well, no, actually I did once interview somebody on camera on camera. Um, much smaller, of course. But um, I think that... 
it, it was it was just a bad interview. It's just simply a bad interview on both both ends. Both ends 100%. Um, we also have um, Enor. Thank you so much for the tip. Some Mexican dollars are good morning. What do you really think Harry feels for Megan deep in his heart? Love from Mexico. Why, thank you. So I think Harry's feelings are complicated. I think he does love the idea of Megan. The idea of Megan that she initially sold to him. I think that's the idea he fell in love with. Sorry, I keep hearing like a beeping and I don't know what it's for. Oh, I think I have a lot of techie stuff over here. So maybe something's dying. Um, but um, so, yeah, I think Harry loves the idea of what he believes Megan is. I think he has seen behind the curtain and I don't think he likes what he sees. And I think he feels complicated because. He loves his wife in some ways. He does not like her in a lot of other ways. They have children together. They're sort of stuck together. They've made this huge, massive change now that they have to live with, which they might never recover from. And he has, you know, children with her. He doesn't have, I think that the thing that makes me most sad for Harry is that if Harry wanted to leave, it's really hard for him now because I think he probably regrets in some way marrying Megan. But at the same point, if he regrets it, he has to acknowledge that basically everybody in his entire family was right. And none of them really liked Megan, and they were all right about Megan. And so he would have to recognize that he was wrong and everybody else was right. And that's really hard, especially for a man. But just in general, that's a hard thing to do is to admit, like, everybody was wrong. And so I think he probably has a dynamic where he does love her, but I don't know if necessarily he's still in love with her. Um, he's still somewhat, he, but he's also infantilized by her. So he relies on her a lot for support and he's, you know, she's kind of a mother to him. So again, it's like this infantilization of him. She becomes this mother figure. So there's just a lot of different dynamics going on, but I don't think necessarily it is a super good relationship by any, any means. And I imagine a lot of the love has gone out of the relationship. Marianne says it's Megan's fashion show. I only have her hear about the dumb outfits she wears. Yes. Yes. I think that's, that's become a big problem. And I did a whole video on that. I think the Invictus Games is sort of letting that happen, but seriously, it just doesn't make any sense that her, her fashion is the only thing that gets attention. This is the only thing that gets attention. It's, it's really quite sad in my opinion. It's really quite sad. But again, that's the Invictus Games has set up that conundrum. Joy Day says, do you know anything about the veterans boycotting the games? No, because the veterans like the game. So they kind of, you know, again, support Harry and Megan, even though they don't really like them. But again, it's so complicated. Uh, Recollection May Berry says, have you seen Amazon's new show, Has Been Hotel? Maybe they're working with Harry and Megan. Oh, that's funny. I have not seen that. I have not seen that, but that is funny. Uh, we have Lady Avier. If, when they divorce, who will get primary custody? He doesn't have dual citizenship. Will you stay in the U.S. to be with the kids or will return to the U.K. Sans kids? Keep up the great work. Great channel. Why, thank you so much, Lady Aviator, and thanks for being a member. So when it comes to this, I mean, generally, I will always say, um, generally, this is always true. Women tend to get primary physical custody. If he wants to split custody, he has to have visa rights to stay here for whatever period of time. But, you know, he's kind of stuck here. Can he take the kids back to the U.K.? Maybe. I don't think Megan in particular wants them to go back to the UK just because she doesn't like the UK because they were not nice to her, you know, in her mind. I think most of the UK was perfectly fine, but in Megan's mind, they were not the nice that she wanted. So again, I think she'll definitely use those kids as leverage against him and whatever divorce proceedings that they have. So it'd be quite a sad situation, I think. <laughs> Um, well, Mary says Megan is a horrible person. Don't, uh, don't care about confident, poised smiles. Doesn't matter. She's not creative, skilled, will not be successful unless she pursues politics. They like mouthpieces without substance. Yeah, that's kind of sort of true. Um, but yeah, she's, she's, I don't think, I mean, she probably has skills or talent somewhere, but it's definitely not in Hollywood and she's not really a creative person. And so trying to base her career out of being a creative is just a recipe for a disaster because she can only emulate other people. She can't, she doesn't seem to have an original idea. And now you could also argue that there's no original ideas on their son, but at the same time too, she's not innovative. She doesn't challenge. We don't even know like what her great passions are really. 
um, because she's so obsessed with her veneer that we don't really see the real Megan ever. All right, so we got another tip from Mama Otter. A brilliant move by Lemonada, no one heard of the company before marketing on their part. Podcast will tank, but they gain name recognition. Very true. A hundred percent true. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter necessarily what will happen with the podcast. Now people know who they are. And that is huge. And that's why they pitched to Megan and Megan couldn't get anybody else. And so there she's finally like, well, they're an all female company and they have stuff I like. So yeah, let's go. But, um, but yeah, I think her podcast will tank again. She'll get the curiosity views, but Megan, again, she needs to be authentic. She needs to connect with an audience and yes, people worship her, but yeah, no, it just won't work. It just will. I just can't foresee it working. She it was terrible terrible last time. Like genuinely, I'm not trying to be me. She was genuinely terrible at it. Genuinely terrible at it. Um, she could not do it. She had to drag every conversation to herself. And for what it was, it was so overly produced. It was a little bit ridiculous. And I was just like, dang girl, like you can calm down a little bit. <laughs> the recollections may vary said how did Megan screw up a poncho yeah oh my gosh it this outfit I'll pull it up real quick because uh, I'll have to do a whole video a video on it because this is the most hideous thing I've ever seen I mean not ever but like Michael Blue Blaze life wife looks so good and like casual but not overdressed Megan just can't seem to look at Look at this thing. Look at the gloves. Those gloves are so ugly. They're like a, a khaki color maybe with the brown of the, like it's so over the top and especially with the gloves. I think she might've been able to do it without the gloves. And honestly here you can feel like a bit of distance between Harry and Megan too. Um, but she it's she like putting the gloves on was way, 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 way too much. And I still think that coat is looks ridiculous. It looks way too over the top. They're at curling. Look at Ed, Harry. He's an Eddie Bauer. And she's in this very expensive Canadian coat brand. Like Eddie Bauer, you can go to outlets and like get that stuff. That vest probably costs, costs 40 bucks. And she's wearing like a $2,000 coat. Um, like why? And she looks casual. Like you can't see her total outfit, but there's a sort of casualness feel to it. And Megan looks so over the top, especially the gloves, the gloves are really what brings it to like level 11. And I'm like, what on earth were you thinking with that? What on earth were you thinking with that? It was, oh yeah. Recollections, Mary. Thank you so much for the tip. How does she cure up a poncho? Yes. Oh my gosh. That thing looks so bad and the gloves, the gloves are what gets me the most. They, I feel like they don't even fit her correctly. And she's tried to do the glove look before and she really can't do it. The the royal who owns and rocks a gloved look is Queen Maxima. I will say Queen Maxima looks fantastic in gloves. Meghan Markle does not. Meghan Markle has tried to make this work look, but it does not work. It does not work for her. So yeah, she looks pretty terrible. So uh, Cheyenne says, I thought you might find this interesting. Ask my brother who is currently serving if he had any opinion on the Invictus games. Both him and his platoon have never heard of them. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny. Yeah, and here's the thing too, what I've noticed and, and what I would love to, to see is that I feel like the Invictus games causes a lot of noise, like a lot of press show up, but do that many people show up to watch the games or is it all press? That's That's a big question. <clears throat> Kathy says, I find it so frustrating the way so many journalists throw shade at the king about William reconciliation with the traitors. It's stunning. Yeah, there's, I mean, I, I hate that all the reconciliation talk, there just will be no reconciliation until Harry divorces Meghan. There'll never be any true recon uh, reconciliation until it happens. Just, just won't. Uh, Maria says, when you rename the, your children, your brand is dead in the water. What awful parents love from England, Brittany. Why, thank you. Sorry, I got a tickle in my throat, hoping to get rid of it. 
Um, coffee and books and coffee with Tara says, good morning, Brittany. Love your channel. I saw a short that showed Eugenie seeming to bump to Princess Catherine who gave her a look. Any insight to this riff? I mean, it's just kind of naturally sometimes what happens and I, I wouldn't read too much into it really. Do I think they're all that close? Probably not. Catherine is, I think, very close to Zara Phillips, probably to, um, um, uh, Autumn Phillips or Autumn Kelly now that she's divorced Peter Phillips. I think she's close to them. They're closer to her age. They also came to Balmoral at the same time with their kids as Catherine and William did. So I think she's closer to them. And we've already heard that, always heard that William is closer to his older cousins and Harry is closer to his younger cousins. So yeah. So um, Jan says, do you think uh, Charles, King Charles hasn't renounced their titles yet? Is he afraid of potential blowback? I think he would have worldwide support. Yes, I think that was the concern in the beginning. I don't think they should be concerned about that anymore. Just do it. I think people would be like, they would get they would get cheered in the crowd in the streets going, yes, finally, finally, the, the nightmare has sort of ended. Because honestly, anymore too, what more can Harry and Meghan say at this point? And they've damaged their brand so much. Like, would anybody believe them, even if they said something that was truthful? Probably not. Natalie says, if people invest a certain amount of money into a country, I think they get citizenship. So for all we know, Harry did that already. Meghan has her British citizenship as well. That is wrong. Meghan Markle never became a British citizen. It's not about investment in the country. There are certain countries where that is the case. Um, but when it comes to the United States, no. There's a citizenship process. You have to take a test. Those sorts of things. In the UK, you have to be living there five years, which Meghan Markle never did. So she is not a UK citizen, and Harry would not be a US citizen as well. Um, Mila says, good afternoon for Germany. Lady Louise Windsor is now the Duchess of Sussex. How does that work? No, that, that wouldn't work. They would retire that title. Lady Louise really doesn't need a Duchess title or anything. Again, she will be a minor royal. Um, but yeah, they if the... Duke and Duchess of Sussex titles retired would go back to the crown to get to somebody else at a really, really long time down the road. <laughs> Ashley Joe said, did they keep the Duke of Windsor title? Like, will anyone be able to use the Duke of Windsor again? Great seeing you this morning. Yes. My understanding is all the titles revert back to the crown unless they are continued through, you know, the children of the person. So that title would go back to the crown. <laughs> we do have a pr American princess from Pensacola, Florida, Princess Kelly. Um, I don't know if Grace Kelly, Grace Kelly spent, um, Princess, Ke oh, Princess Kelly. Yes, yes, yes. A Sax Goldberg Gotha. Yes. Yes. Princess Kelly. That is right. Sorry. It took me a minute. It took me a minute. So yes, you have a princess from Pensacola, Florida. So Maureen says Princess Madeline's children could all claim American and British citizenship through their father, Chris. Yes, that as well. Um, our Miata says, why do you think the coat of arms when they are not popular in the U Brit Britain and the coat of arms are not recognized in America doesn't matter? It matters to them clearly because they got pretty miffed. People didn't like it. Um, so yeah, they don't, they, they're very obsessed with it. And again, it, it's, it reflects their belief in their royal titles and their royal privilege. That's what it, that's what right represents. Oh, Pam Downs, thank you so much for your insightful reporting. Why, thank you, Pam. I do appreciate that. Uh, that's so sweet of you this morning. I do appreciate it. It just means a lot, guys. Um, so there's a rumor that Harold asked the king to have a talk with the wife on the phone. And that's what likely ended any conversation, hence the 12 minutes. Yes, I'm sure Charles was like, no, no. Why am I talking to Megan on the phone? No. Um, Joe G says, I wonder how Queen Marguerite Move, remove who removed the tiles from her son and family. Brittany, could you comment or research some on this? Yeah, I did a video on it at the time and she could just do it with a stroke of the pen. But the thing is all Royal families are different. So they have different, you know, regulations for different things. Like the Swedes stripped the HRH of the King's um, grandchildren from his two younger children. So they are not an HRH, his or her Royal Highness. They're still princes and princesses, but not a his or her Royal Highness. And so those things can be done sometimes easily in other countries. My understanding too, is that it was, it's kind of sort of possible maybe for Charles to do it with a letter of patent, but he needs to do it and he needs to be the one leading it. And I think he's just dragging his feet. And what bothers me is that I think Charles's reasoning is, oh, at some point it'll get better. I'm like, Charles, it will not get any better. 
Harry and Megan have proved that time and time again. Uh, Sugar Cookie says they recently showed their coat of arms. It was full of weird symbolism. Yeah, they really, really enjoyed like putting that up because they were so, so excited. Star Girl of um, Anaris says, it's my second live. I got up early because of my cat. Yay. Good morning from Oregon. Love you, Brittany. Thank you so much, Jessica. I'm glad you were able to join. Oh my goodness. We are so far back in the chat. <laughs> we so tried to. <laughs> um, Janice says, I'm tired of seeing the two of them holding hands. It's sickening, childish, and performative. Yes. They actually, I was so excited that the Telegraph did an article about that. And somebody in the newsroom says, every time they see their them holding hands, it makes them cringe. And I'm like, thank you. I'm not the only one who finds it just so cringy and annoying. So I'm like, real couples don't do that. Oh, real, well, yeah. Uh, Maureen says, I'd rather have the bright, shiny faces of Beatrice, Earl Snowden, Sarah Chateau, and a few other Windsors. Yes. Sarah Chateau is lovely, I think. I think she's lovely. She always looks so classy and so simple. And her style is very, very simple and, and hasn't changed much, but she looks great. Kathy says, the only good thing about the GMA interview was Mary's PR. Megan's PR ended up on the cutting room floor. Yeah, that was, it was, no. Uh, <laughs> And Megan, what I kind of find maybe a little bit comforting is that Megan, for all her obsessive need for control and to look perfect and everything, that she married Harry, who's like, you know, foot and mouth, a walking disaster, I think is sort of some divine ret retribution there. Vaughn says, there's a rumor Harold asked the, the king to have a talk with his wife on the phone. Oh, yeah, I already got that. Mary says, good point. Why are they holding hands like children? No idea. It's well, I've always thought it was part of the, I thought it was always part of their performance. I was always thought it was part of their performance that it was just like a huge part of, of what they wanted to portray and that it wasn't right. It wasn't accurate. So Catherine says, I knew the King would come back. The ring would come back, but I didn't think it would be at that event. Yeah. I mean, I think it was there in Jamaica, but we just couldn't get decent enough pictures to say for sure. I know some people were like, oh, the ring is back. The ring is back. And I'm like, but I can't totally see it. So I can't make a definitive judgment. I wanted to actually see something where it's like, okay, that is her engagement ring. It's not just a bigger ring. It's like, it is the engagement ring. Uh, Sputnik says, love your commentary. When do you think the divorce will happen? I'm not sure. Sometime within the next five years, I would guess. I only ever gave them five years as a couple. And I think we've seen that that was pretty accurate because a lot of reports of tensions and problems behind the scenes started emerging last year, like really strongly from decent publications, like not like gossip mags, but like the telegraph and stuff. So, and even people magazine, there was an article talking about how Megan runs the household and like, that does not a good look. <laughs> Uh, good morning, Brittany from Alberta, Canada. I read on X that Harry offered to go back to work for the RF. Do you think this is true? Thank you. Yes. Uh, again, it, this came from the Times. The Times is a very reputable publication, one of the most reputable in the UK. If they reported on it, they had good reason to. And so I think, yes, he offered. And I think they probably looked at him going, sir. <laughs> like, just like kind of like trying to get him out the door. And although I wish, I hope, I hope to goodness, Charles just told him flat out no. I'm um, sorry, that's not going to happen. But I think Harry's misconstruing personal reconciliation with reconciliation with the overall fan or like as a working royal, which is not going to happen. Oh, Dana Tate became a YouTube member. Why, thank you so much, Dana. I really do appreciate it. Okay. Um, uh, royal Flush says, why didn't we see the wounded warriors and said, we see Harry playing on the equipment that the participants use. It would have been real then. Yeah. I mean, we saw a bit of the participants, but not a lot. Cause again, the problem I'm having with the Invictus games is that even if Harry supposedly wants to shine a light on the competitors, he's really shining the light on himself. And because of that, the competitors get totally lost in the storm. So <sighs> Uh, I like asking again how to make him mess up a poncho. It's the one item of clothing she had leeway in and fit, and she still couldn't manage it. Nope. Uh, Conrad Black had dual British UK Canadian citizenship. He was made a baron in the UK and forced to give up his Canadian citizenship and wear a constitutional monarchy. Oh, interesting. Yeah, again, I think there's different rules for different countries and everything. So, Carrie Carpenter, hi, Brittany from Virginia. First time catching this live. Hoorah! Yay! That's so exciting. 
Philippa, thank you so much for your tip. Your con royal content is brilliant. Thanks so much. Why, thank you. I do appreciate it. Try to offer you all compelling and interesting and, you know, as much as I can, like making logical deductions on things. Um, so I know I hear a lot of people appreciate that and I appreciate you guys appreciating it. Cornelia, thank you so much for becoming a member. I'm so excited for you. That is awesome. American woman said I had a daughter by C-section. I was in terrible pain for around two months and it was a tender for a couple after that. Yes, it'll be, it's, it's going to be a like abdominal surgery is tough. Lynn says, I wonder if becoming a citizen would, if, if it would affect his position in the line of succession. No, but definitely would affect his title. Um, Mima says, my son was born in Germany. We applied through the consulate and he is not dual. He is just a U.S. citizen. Sorry, long time ago. Yeah, it depends on the country where you're born in. So Germany, he probably wasn't born and given automatic citizenship, but he was, um, obviously you go to the U.S. embassy and you apply for that. But anybody born, that's why we have some, you know, People could call it illegal immigration issues because people come in illegally, they have children, and their children all of a sudden are U.S. citizenship, U.S. citizens because they were just born here. So Maria says, Maria became a member. Thank you so much for becoming a member this morning, Maria. I really do appreciate it. And so um, let's keep going here. Uh, Caxlar says, uh, Harry's U.S. visa will be signed next week. Not decided, but I think they're doing some sort of exploratory case on it. So that will be on the 23rd. Uh, Candy said, I had emergency surgery on my stomach and was in for two weeks also. When I was released, I had drainage tubes hanging out of my stomach. It was very painful. Recovery was slow. Yes, I didn't even think about drainage tubes. That could be true. Um, I think my dad had, my dad had a really bad, um, appendix burst issue. And so I think he had a, a, um, a drain tube in. So, uh, Becky says I've had abdominal surgery. You never realize how much you use those abdominal muscles to move. I mean, literally move. It takes a couple of months to get back to moving normal. I send my sympathy to her. Yeah. And that's why I don't understand why people are so frustrated about not seeing girls. Like I have not had that level of surgery, but I can just say from my surgeries that I still have issues even now. Like it takes a while to recover. Like it genuinely does. Um, my, my wrist is pretty good, but my wrist does still give me fits. Um, my, my foot, I didn't get the, my surgeon for some reason never suggested physical therapy, which he should have, because I just don't even have the right mobility in my foot anymore. Like my, my toes and my left foot, um, don't even really touch the ground as much. So like, you'll see different, um, impressions in each, like they're quite different in between my left and right foot and my shoes. Um, Marcel says abdominal surgery is a major procedure as an RN working in outpatient surgery. It usually requires for my department for the patient to also see our MP. Yes. Huge, huge, huge issue. Um, Mary says Megan is not a feminist. She jumps on whatever issue is popular and benefits from it. If there was support for men movement, she'd be on it. Yeah. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. <laughs> her idea of feminism, this is from Allison, is to figure out how to make men pay for her so she can be independent. Yes. Yes. I love that. Uh, uh, Diaz says, I watched a documentary about Anne Boleyn. There are a lot of similarities between her and Meghan Markle, especially being so manipulative. She had bewitched Prince Harry. Yes. I mean, yeah, this is true. And, but I will say Meghan Markle is a manipulative person, but not a particularly bright one. <laughs> Because at the end of the day, there were so many different things she could have done so much better if she had like a real good thought out strategy, but she's, she's not that person. Uh, Adopt GTX says, um, I've said this several times, Harry and Meghan were vastly overdressed for Whistler. It was a warm weather winter here. Did anyone knows the bare grass. It's also above freezing most days. They looked silly. Yeah, I noticed, I noticed that too. I think Samisa was 30. There was like one person there from California who was like, freaking out about how cold it was and I, and standing on ice for, or snow for a long time, you can feel the chill. But, um, yeah, I, I did see it was like 33 degrees and I'm like, well, I mean, that's cold, but that's not like awfully cold. Um, Yvonne says there's rumors. Harold asked the King to have a talk with his wife on the phone. Okay. So sorry. I read that again. Um, Megan said, Megan Kelly said that Megan is a feminist. Her literal claim to fame is getting married. Yes, yes, 100% yes. It's just like Megan, that Megan doesn't see the irony in that. Oh. Hmm. 
Um, Melissa says, Charles can be Paul all he wants behind the scenes, but he must draw a public line separating the Harkles from the monarchy. He has allowed the Harkles three ring circus to tarnish the monarchy's image and rep. Yes. Yes. He can do, he can be of the father behind the scenes, but he, in the public face, he must do, he must be tough and he can't seem to do it. I took another UK test, got 21 out of 24, some silly mistakes by light. But I, unlike Harry, have a higher education. <laughs> Both Harry and Meghan seem very surface and don't possess much stuff of knowledge. No, Meghan Markle thinks she's a deep person. She's really not. She's very superficial. Again, she doesn't have a lot of innovative or new ideas. Um, I just think that's really, really funny. <laughs> So uh, Jen says, check out Harry Prince Harry curling rink in Vancouver Friday. They went to BJ restaurant with dinner with singer Michael Bublé and his wife, local singer from Vancouver. Yeah, but I did think it was interesting. We did not get any big government officials. So definitely Justin Trudeau did not go, which I thought was good. Like they have so many better things to do than promote the Invictus games like Justin Trudeau. But uh, Diana says, how old are Harry's two children now anyways? So Lilla, so they will be turning three and five this year. And they have a great senses of humor. No, incredible senses of humor or something like that. And I'm like, that's how you describe like adults. Like a child does not have a great sense of humor. Not that children can be funny, silly, all those sorts of things and make you laugh. But I think it requires a level of intelligence and awareness in the the structures of humor that most children who are currently four and two do not have. Just that was what Harry described him as. I was like, are your children little mini adults? Kathy P says Megan does not want children taking attention away from her. Yes. Yes. That's why she doesn't show them. I know some people think that children don't exist and everything. I think they do. I just don't think Megan wants any competition for attention, even from her own children. Think about that. Catherine says Candace Owens did a great job on Meghan Markle Friday. I'll have to look at that. Pia says, I think Meghan Markle is hiding the kids until she can make a few bucks out of them. That too. That too. Uh, Loretta says the children are too young for Disneyland. Oh, definitely not. Definitely not. Like, um, uh, I know a lot of people who take their kids to Disneyland as like as soon as they can. Yes, they can't ride the rides, but they can meet the people. There are certain rides they can do. Like they can go on the carousel. Like my parents took me to Disneyland, I think for the first time um, when I was 18 months old. It was raining. Um, I had a strong reaction to the boat with the cannon. Apparently we came back and all I would tell anybody about Disneyland was the big boat with the loud noise, which my parents were like really frustrated by because they're like, we took you to Disneyland. And the only thing you could tell people was about the big boat with the loud noise. Um, and there's a cute little picture of me in like a store with like all the stuffed animals. Cause it was like raining or something. And I was in a little poncho. It was very cute. So um, you can definitely take, I mean, they can't do everything but you can definitely take the kids to disneyland for sure says lol disneyland probably refused to empty the park for me Megan, you know she would want it all for herself yeah because i mean if they were there they would i mean they're they would be escorted they would have to pay for the escort which i think anybody can do it pay escort by disney um you have to pay additional extra and you can get to the front of the lines and stuff and if they had done that somebody would have seen him i would imagine Maureen says, I agree that was also about Megan's pathological image control. The kids are too young to behave in the way she demands. Yes. If they don't behave in that way, she just doesn't want to deal with them. Um, yeah. Recollections may vary. Says if they took the kids to Disney, we would know she would splash that news all over the world. Oh, yeah. Especially because Diana did that um, as well. And it just would be fun. But yeah, she definitely could 100% take the kids to Disney. If you recall, she was no, nobody as a child herself and she can't handle it if they are seen because they might not, because maybe they aren't cute enough for her to display. Yeah, again, it's all about Megan's self-image and control. <laughs> Pat says, oh, Brittany, we sure don't want them here in Colorado. Yeah, um, I'm sure um, nobody really wants them. <laughs> Except for maybe, uh, not even really people in California wants them. <laughs> all right. Okay. Uh, Mary says, I bet the thrill is gone in that marriage. Their fake hand holding is for the big paycheck. Yeah. Cause they didn't do it that much on their Valentine's day. <laughs> um, yeah. So Lisa says my kids were attached to my hip. They needed to be socialized. Yeah. I don't even know how often the kids are out with people. Shelly black says two 30 AM in Australia. Oh my goodness. It is so late. <laughs> Uh, Irene says self-obsessed and found the perfect match. Yeah, Harry is as obsessed with Megan as Megan is with Megan. 
Uh, P Pacific said, disappointing that fellow Vancouverite Michael Bublé sang My Way to Harry with new lyrics. You know, Megan did that lyric rewrite. Eh, probably. Uh, Ritz says, Will Reeve is a pretty good journalist. I'm sure GMA staff gave him a hard time. He had one of the most difficult subjects. Sorry. I lost my place, guys. So sorry. I accidentally, I was like moving something and I accidentally went too far back. It went to a former page. So I'm so sorry, but I am back. Yes. Brief technical problems. The mouse pad was a little too sensitive. So but I am back. Hopefully everybody, everybody um, can come back with me. So sorry, guys. I might have lost some of the stream. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was one of those things I have my mouse pad up here and I swiped and it, it went back a page instead of doing what I wanted it to do. I don't even remember what I was wanting it to do. But yeah, uh, Will Reeve is a pretty good journalist. So yeah, um, I mean, I imagine he is. I just can't totally tell. It was just a really awkward interview. And I just wonder if he was like read the riot act about how to interact with Harry and Megan. And I wonder if that contributed to a ridiculous level of nerves. <laughs> Back lives. Um, I don't know if this. Yay. Elizabeth says, yay, caught alive. Yeah. So I did, unfortunately, with my back thing, I did end up missing a good like a uh, good chunk of comments I can't get back to, unfortunately. So I'm so sorry. Uh, it's Megan like Reagan says, Penny also what has been documented is that she lost 17 staff members because she's a nice person, right? The kind of turnover says good boss, doesn't it? Yes. Yes. Um, that kind of turnover, you just can't fake it. You just can't fake something like that happening. Um, uh, so yeah. So anyways, yeah, let's keep going here. <laughs> um, if a child is born on a U.S. military base, it is considered to be U.S. territory. Yes, that is true. It's kind of interesting. Let's see. Okay. Um, Stephanie says, Prince Harry will not renounce his spot in the line of succession. He will not. He will not. Um, and so it's, it's one of those things where it's, he should do it, but he just can't seem to do it. He just can't seem to do it. <laughs> yeah. Mary says, who wants to bet their nannies would be, are unattractive. Megan would be way too insecure to have a young, attractive nanny. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Although I honestly, really, I, I would not suggest having a young, attractive nanny. <laughs> um, um, yeah. And Becky says, um, members, please don't argue with Benny. Just block them. It's not worth it. Yes. Just blocking is the best way to go. Um, I did just block them too, but, um, just blocking is the easiest way. Cause you just can't, can't win. And it just kind of goes circular, circular. Um, Missy says, I gosh, I go to Disney world in Orlando and Paris left, right. There are babies in prams everywhere. Yes. Yes. Uh, Janice says, I think at 18, the Sussex kids might have to choose between Great Britain and U.S. citizenships for sports participation. I remember Naomi Osaka choosing Japan and giving up her U.S. citizenship. But I don't think either of those kids will be high-ranking physical competitors, so I don't think that'll be an issue. Um, um, Melissa says, my most favorite memory is going to Disney for my fifth birthday, uh, 6985. And I still remember it like yesterday. I still have the pictures frame. Archie would love it. Yeah, a hundred percent. I loved going to Disneyland. We did end up going quite a bit when I was a kid. And so, um, I do love it. Um, so not sure right now, not totally a fan of Disney anymore. Sadly, they've lost the magic for sure. Uh, Jane Buxman, I feel sorry for Lily because a female narcissist daughter suffers most because she's seen as a threat or competition. Yes, I, I would say that's that's true for Megan. That's true for Megan. Um, Brittany, have you read Lady C's book on the Queen Mother? I have not. I do have a couple other books on the Queen Mother, but I haven't read her. Well, do I? I think maybe I have one. Um, but yeah, I haven't seen it. 
Uh, I haven't read one yet. Um, I live in Texas said, Brittany, did you see Harry and Meghan pooed on several occasions at Invictus? Yes. I, I think, I mean, here's the thing. People like to see famous people. It's, it's a notable thing. They can say, oh, I saw Harry and Meghan. But the crowd shots I saw were generally like pretty muted. Like they weren't like, yeah, screaming, so excited. Um, I'd have to pull up my video of Catherine and William in Boston to see a uh, comparison. But I think, again, very different. Um, Case Palace is a U.S. citizen, doesn't have to give up citizenship to compete in the Olympics or a skier who competed for China as well as a figure skater. Yeah. Um, again, again, you can choose like the country you compete for, but not necessarily have to change your citizenship. Um, Oh, I was a number one Harry and Meghan fan, but this so-called new branding has angered me. This is from Stephanie. I recognize the bullying be nature of a narcissist when I see it. The coat of arms, the use of titles. Yes, I mean, it's just a lot. And I honestly would give Harry and Meghan more of a shot if they dropped the titles and just were trying to be Harry and Meghan. Just try to be Harry and Meghan, build their own brand, build their own business, but they just can't seem to do that. Like they either have to constantly utilize their titles and everything. And it's just kind of distasteful, especially the way they've treated their family, treating them so horribly and yet desperately clinging to the titles and the coat of arms and all this stuff. And it's like, Okay, either you believe in this stuff or you don't, or it's just a convenient way to get you attention. And so if it's that, then it's, it's just sad. It's just sad. <laughs> Laura says, um, Harry and Meghan's criticism is well-deserved. I think in most instances, yes, yes, it is. <laughs> um, so this is in response to the kind of Penny Harry himself said he never said that in an interview with Tom. Um, Bradby, yes. I, Harry's whole backtracking on the whole racism narrative was very annoying and very like eye roll inducing because he was very public. Like if the public narrative had run for two years that the Royals was racist, and all of a sudden here he's going, well, I didn't call him that. And I'm like, but yes, you did. Yes, you did. <laughs> G Anderson says, did you see the photo of Megan hugging the guy at Invictus while she was still shaking Harry's hand? I didn't quite see that, but no, I could, I could definitely heaven forbid they're not touching heaven forbid they're they are not touching and it again it just looks like a performance just looks like a performance um which is very annoying uh did anyone catch the video of harry going down the tube on his belly with a helmet on hilarious yeah i did see that and i should have grabbed the video and i forgot to m elizabeth holmes who was there she has i think um so many thoughts or something is her thing and she um, had like watching the video of Megan reacting to Harry is just like, it, it felt very performative to me because she definitely didn't do that the second time. So, but the first time there were more cameras down there, the second time there were not. And so I'm like, okay, so was the first time a bit more of a fake? I don't know. Yeah. Mankey says, oh no, technical problems. Yes. I swipe back too hard. Swipe back too hard. Uh, Kathleen says when Harry and Meghan were at the San Diego Seals inaugural gym, it was only an hour and 15 minutes from her dad. It's really too bad. Yeah. She, I mean, they don't care. Uh, if you open Harry's wallet, you'll find his official resident alien card. Funny. Eh? It's issued by immigration naturalization. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, court watch Australia says maybe they're keeping the kids in hiding so they can be paid $2 million exclusive interview where, um, Oprah or Gail King meet the kids. Yeah. I mean, I, I imagine there's some sort of payday with the kids coming. I imagine. Okay. Uh, fire elemental says they may hold the hands, but I never see the look of deep love that couples have, you know, the one where they each look at each other and so you see them communicating with their eyes. Yes. It's just, again, it feels so much like a performance. And I remember thinking when I first saw Harry and Megan doing that, I was like, well, what happens on the day you don't feel it? Cause you're doing all that. And that might be part of the, the, the peel, but at some point that's, that's not going to like, you're not going to feel that. And then you have to do it because as soon as you stop doing it, that's when things are going to start. And so, uh, Nana says, when do you, Brittany, when do you defend your thesis? Um, well, I've been taking a little bit of a break from school just because there's so much going on and I just need to focus on getting the channel in a little bit better spot. So I may take a class next semester. I may, I may not. So it would be a couple of years. It would be a couple of years. I got to just figure out 
what exactly I want to focus on. Um, and so maybe I can keep doing some of those other classes, but it's been nice to have a bit of a break. I think I took on too much too fast. And so it's just been nice to come in like, Oh, I don't have to think about that right now. Um, cause I want to kind of do other things to get the, the channel in a better place and all these sorts of things. So, um, okay, let's see. All right. Okay. So <laughs> oh, Deborah says, thanks RNN community for great diverse topics being discussed here. Just ignore the trolls so we can have intelligent discussions. Yes. Um, if you can ignore the best you can, that is that's best. Um, DS says, who's your favorite historical figure to study about and why? <laughs> Um, I always have so many people. I like love li reading about all the people. <laughs> that might be saying weird. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, Eleanor of Aquitaine, I really enjoyed learning more about her because she's a very interesting woman at the time. And I, I, I haven't had a chance yet to read much about her husband, Henry II, but he was a very good tactician and very good at holding multiple territories at the same times. And both his, all of his, of his sons sucked at that. Um, cause his son was Richard and John and he had another son named Henry, I believe, but Henry died before he became, you know, became King and he had locked, um, uh, Henry had locked Eleanor up and just so many different facets of that family are really, really fascinating. So I've been itching to get more into kind of that history. Mm. Trying to think of, I mean, I've studied a lot, like what interested me initially in history was the Holocaust. I've read a lot about that and particularly just interested in Nazi policy and those sorts of things. Uh, Cause I just find that to be very telling and an awareness type of thing, just like how, how, how evil humanity can be sometimes I think is important to recognize and, and learn about not as many people like the knowledge of the Holocaust anymore is, is terribly terribly lacking. So that's always important. I mean, I would say almost I'm more, not necessarily a singular person, but more of like, um, like historical factions and situations and stuff. Um, so I have a couple of books, which I got on the, um, the civil wars in England. Cause I think that might be a particularly interesting time period to study. And so, yeah, just kind of a lot of different things. My, my, my issue has always been is that I kind of want to learn everything. <laughs> And that's just a, that's just not realistic. Uh, but B, I just, I just love learning about so many different things. And so, um, it's just so fun in my opinion, because it's just like learning so much about who people are in the past and how showing how we've changed in some ways. And yet we all remain the same. And that history is just a, a the story of the past sort of come to life. And so that's just, I enjoy it. Uh, Belinda says, I've had five abdominal surgeries. They are hard to recover with drainage tubes and daily bandage changes. My heart goes out to Princess Catherine. Yes. If Archwell was a charity, why was there no donation button for people to donate? It's a sham in my opinion. Well, they want it to be more foundation, but if they open it up more to like donations. They might open up it up more to criticism. So uh, Lily says, do you know anything about Harry and Meghan arguing in the restaurant at dinner on Valentine's Day? I didn't hear anything about that. Could happen, could not happen. Uh, Sandra says, sorry, Brittany, I think I came down on you a bit hard during the previous live chat. I shouldn't have, have, I was just upset because I felt you were too harsh on Prince William who's doing the best he can. Well, that's the thing. We can all have different opinions on the topic and we can all have our own sides. And I think that's perfectly fine. So it's just, um, you know, kind of respecting everybody's right, to have their own opinions. Um, and so I think that's good. Obviously, though, some people come on here from the Harry and Meghan side, and they're a bit aggressive, and that I do not tolerate, but um, um, as best I can. But everybody should have the right to have their opinions, but to attack people um, is, is it's not good. But I didn't, no worries at all, Sandra, because it's totally, totally willing. You totally have your own opinion there, and that's totally fine. Um, and I, you know, I'm looking forward to William getting back, and so hope, and he will be back on Sunday. So that'll be good. Brittany, you're still, uh, your opinion on Meghan Markle ch uh, charging into hug that man while Harry was still shaking his hand. So um, I haven't seen that in particular, but yeah, that's totally a Meghan thing. 
Uh, she just doesn't, again, she wants to be center of attention as much as possible. Pinkie Pie says they are nothing without the RF. They are not. They are not. They, again, they've had four years to establish their own thing and they can't seem to do it. She can't even do a podcast, guys. I do a whole YouTube channel. I run by myself. I learn how to edit. I do all this stuff all by myself. And somehow with all the resources in the world, she cannot get a stinking podcast together more than 12 episodes. Like my goodness, with the amount of money they could have gotten from their pot, their Spotify deal, guys, you would be seeing so much more stuff. I can't even tell you. Uh, Eyes of Texas says, Brittany, what do you think about Megan wanting to be addressed as ma'am or Harry as sir? I think it's ridiculous. I think it's arrogant. I think it's just off putting. It's just not, not great. Uh, Jet Ranger says she has lived off the graces of other men and he has lived off the graces of the royal family. Yes, I think so. Terry says, I've seen several famous people and only one who ever impressed me was Frank Sinatra. Harry and his appendage don't impress me. Yeah, the, uh, Frank Sinatra, that would be oh, that'd be interesting. He Was he the one with the really, really blue eyes, Frank Sinatra? Um, so yeah, that would be, I mean, I think too, I watched the old videos of like Hollywood people arriving for events in London, uh, for like the tiara videos. Cause they used to wear tiaras at the events and just the glamour you could feel from uh, some of these older Hollywood celebrities. And you're like, Oh, what happened to that level of just glamour and sophistication that I feel like Hollywood used to have. And now we just have trash. Um, and I think that's sometimes why people are liking monarchies more and more because they have that old style glamour that people are sort of searching for. Meza says that we should, we all would have wished them well if they had left and tried to live their lives without trashing their royal family. Yes, 100%. I, I would be a fan of perhaps, I mean, I still wasn't a fan in the beginning, but I would perhaps be a fan if they could create their own thing. But it's clear they just have nothing. They have a big old steaming pile of nothing. And so they're like, okay, well, we can be royals. But come on. Oh, so annoying. Uh, I had heard that 200 soldiers from around the world saying they will boycott the games as long as Harry and Meghan are involved. And is that true? I haven't heard that. Um, again, I try to always go off. There might be some rumors in different places and stuff. I always try to go off mainstream publications because I know at least they've gone through usually, not all the time, usually some sort of vetting process. Uh, New Mexico girl said, good morning from Albuquerque, New Mexico. If Harry and Meghan's house situation hasn't been resolved by the time William is king, do you think he will, what do you think he will do about it? I think he will do what his father can. And quite honestly. I think Harry will bring, or sorry, William will bring the hammer down. Gary Williams says, you're a very beautiful woman. Perhaps you could use a lace handkerchief for your sniffles. Why, thank you. Yes, I probably could. Like, it's weird to be like, sometimes I'm fine and sometimes my allergies act up and it's just like, oh, what happened? Butter, butter Bugs Baked Good says, did Harry also deny he gave a kill count in the interview? I'm like, dude, you wrote about it in the book. Yeah, it's, Harry would be that dumb. I didn't see that particular, but yes, Harry would be that dumb. Uh, Heather Bryant says, hello, Brittany and Miss Pippa from Georgia. I think Megan has gone off, gone. The RF would help Harry more if he apologized. Yes. Apology is absolutely not necessary. Uh, what bothers me more than anything, according to Elaine, is that as Meghan Markle's jealousy of Catherine because she is the future queen and not her, Meghan Markle's behavior is worrying. Yeah, I, well, I think kind of for me, the dumb thing is, well, Kate was always going to be queen. <laughs> like that should not be a shock to you that she's going to be queen. Um, that should not be a shock to you in the slightest. Like, why is that a big old shock to you? Uh, like that should be just like Captain Obvious, obvious, like seriously. Uh, so if she had an issue with that, like I question her intelligence, like actually. <laughs> um, Georgie, Georgia says, Meghan Markle is insane. I put nothing past her. Another Borgia, I fear. I actually did read the book on the Borgias, which I thought was really good and interesting. Um, he is uh, like... It, it was a good book, too, because it kind of dismantled some of the rumors about the kids being the children of the Pope, which I thought was really interesting. Um, and I did not know that Cesar Borgia was friends with um, Leonardo da Vinci and Niccolo Machiavelli, like three titans and very. Yeah, it's so interesting. So interesting. Uh, Kate Powell says, yeah, my British spouse was saying the other day that he watched Harold grow up. He's extra supremely disappointed, but he has now become more of a royalist. Yes, I think so. <laughs> uh, Cher says, I don't care much about the tiles, but they will become less powerful as Harry and Meghan age and move further away from the crown. Removal of the line of succession would send a stronger message. Yes. Yes, I think so. 
<laughs> As CJ says, ah, I missed the 10 a.m. start, but I actually just finished grocery shopping. Ah, I had a notification too, but it's freezing today, so I wasn't thinking. Well, that happens to the best of us. I totally missed a, a um, something to do. Um, so Janet Claire says Henry II was one who initially attributed the Notre Dame prediction that Harry fans are now attributing to him. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. Uh, Maya says, what do you think about William's BAFTA attendance? You keep complaining that Harry is just once glitz and glamour, but William only works for months is glitz and glamour. Well, no, um, he goes to the BAFTAs every year. He does other royal engagements. Obviously, Catherine has been sick, so we haven't seen him much. But he does other bread and butter royal engagements quite a bit. The BAFTAs is just one of the consistent things on the calendar. And one of his few, like, um, uh, he, one of his few, like, really dress, dress up events that he does. Obviously, there are state visits that play into there. You have whatever tour they're doing. Like, there's a couple other things. But, like, this is on his calendar every year. <laughs> um, I don't understand why you're complaining because he's been the president of the BAFTA for a while and he's been going here going there for the last six seven eight years so that's not a surprise at all <laughs> um Mankey Moo Moo says I was re-watching the crown and they mentioned that William II was killed and it was suspected that his brother Henry was behind his death that could be definitely true it could be definitely true um I wonder if Megan and Harry watch the royal website to see themselves being put further down the line of succession. I bet Harry and Megan see King Charles for different control. Probably. Probably. Um, <laughs> oh, this is sweet. Lori Hawkins, do you make more now than you did at your previous job? I hope so because you're so good at what you do. Thank you. Um, I do. And yet it's, I also put a lot back into the business. So it's kind of like a mixed bag in a way, but I do really appreciate it because it's, it's just great to be able to follow your passion. Um, PN, P new C says I'm fascinated by people and it, that lends itself to saying history. Yes. And that's why I think I'm, I'm somewhat good at this and reading situations is because when you read more history, you realize human nature and human behavior really doesn't change. Um, and so because of that, you're sort of able to make logical deductions about what people perhaps are thinking and doing because, people have throughout the history have done the exact same thing. So it's not a super big surprise, different things. And so it's, it that just lends itself to, I think, helping. And you have a more holistic view. I think part of May, Harry and Meghan's problem is that they're too like, we need to do X right now rather than having a holistic long-term view. And I think history helps with that a bit too. Um, Archwell is not a nonprofit, but not a charity. It's strange, but there's a difference. Yes, it is a foundation. Um, hi, Brittany. Katie says, um, hi, Brittany. Have you read Philippa Gregory's book? I have not. Um, I, I kind of try to as best I can, especially recently. I got actually some books from used bookstore, which I was super excited about. I usually try to go with as best as I can look at who the author is. That's usually who I evaluate. So I haven't read really much of her books, but I generally stick to like PhD history, um, just because those people generally are more, they, they've had to go through some rigorous training in terms of like being able to read certain documents that most other people cannot read. But I haven't read Philippa Gregory's books. Maybe, maybe not. I have to look. So yeah, sometimes I'm sort of, it's interesting because it, I, I would have to see her writing style, but there's an author and she's kind of famous. She did a book on Cleopatra, Stephanie Schiff or something. And um, I've tried to read a couple of her books and I'm like, I actually like what probably most people would not like quite as much, which is like, just give me the bare basic, not the bare basic facts, but give me the facts in a compelling way. I don't need a super elaborative thing. And that's what I feel like she does. And so, um, K Powell says history keeps repeating. Yes. Yes. It's, uh, um, nothing. History is always the same. It's never, never really changes. And so, yeah, well, I mean, our technology changes, but the, the bare basics of history do not. Yeah. So Windsor Castle was built by William the Conqueror, not the current iteration that we have, but yes, a, a, fella, a, a previous one. And then we also have um, obviously Tower of London originally as well. And a lot of castles because William the Conqueror, once he conquered England, built a lot of castles throughout the country to sort of maintain his control. Uh, Jordan Jones says, watch every morning on my way to work. Why, thank you. Uh, Jodo, Jojo says, take them off. Jodo says, take them off the website. Yes. Yes. Huh. Oh, Joanna says, Brittany. Hi, hi, Brittany. Poland here listening to my favorite Royal guilty pleasure. Why? Thank you. Yes. I, and I have been to Poland. Your, your country is lovely. I was so excited to go. I was like really, really excited. 
um, I went to Krakow and then I did go and was able to visit Auschwitz. Uh, so that was like a big, um, something I'd been wanting to do for a really, really long time. So I was super excited to be able to do that. So it was a great, great trip. Um, yes, great print about some old, um, some old, sorry. Yes, great print about why some of us like the monarchy because there is its traditions and weight reminds us of old Hollywood glamour. Yes, the glamour of old Hollywood is very real. Uh, Hellbell says, I love watching you, Brittany. I'm British, but your channel is brilliant. So I prefer to watch you. Why, thank you. Why, thank you. Um, so yes, and we'll try to, I'll try to grab some last comments here real quick as we wrap up because we've been for two hours. So we want to get this sort of kind of get it all back together. We also have M-E-N says, why does King Charles just, just stop them from using the Sussex name? Queen Elizabeth did it real fast. Um, Harry and Megan, again, the report is that somehow they don't think they have to abide by that anymore. So, yeah. Um, Colleen, I didn't see um, that, but you know what? I really believe the Prince and Princess of Wales really love each other and they don't need to hold hands to prove it. Yes, and they hold hands in private times. Like we have videos of them in the Caribbean holding hands as they're walking to an event and stuff because that is their private time in public at events and engagements. Guess what? They're working. <laughs> and it's kind of unprofessional to be hanging off your spouse while you're supposed to be working. Yes, there's this weird thing where royals are both private and public, but Catherine and William broadly keep the PDA to private moments, and I think that's perfectly fine. You don't need to have that be part of your performance. Um, one S says, Brittany, you were right. Modern celebrities have lost their shine. Social media destroyed celebrity culture. Yes, yes, 100%. 100%. Um, so, uh, Jenna says one of my ancestors is Lucretia Borgia. Ooh, that is very cool. That is very cool. Very interesting family. Uh, Colleen says, you can see that they love each other just by the look in their eyes. When they look at each other, they don't have to do the death stare. No, and they don't have to do like kind of the fake loving <gasps> stare. Okay. Kimberly says, Brittany, I would like to learn more about Haiti King Queen, the, um, the one they called baby doc. I'd have to look into that. I'm not familiar with that, but I have been to Haiti. Um, which is an interesting, I'm, I don't want to recommend going there for vacation, really. Quite a, quite a dangerous place. <laughs> um, uh, M Mankey Mumu says, I feel sorry for King Charles. He waited so long to become king and fought to be with the woman he loves. So now, now that he is king and he has his queen, he now has cancer. It's so sad. It is sad. I do think it's sad. I do feel sorry for Charles in that way because he waited for so long and he 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 did the right thing and he's he's moved on he he's done all this and so so good um so rit says the prince and princess of wales have class and do not need to paw at a all over each other they do not uh, becky says unless something drastic happens to king charles i believe he will finish out his reign i can't imagine william coveting the throne because his father would have to pass it's inevitable it's that evident william loves him yes and Obviously, as well, if, like, he, unless Charles was just, like, absolutely very, very, very ill, then maybe, then maybe. Um, Butterbug's face good. Wow, two hours. Time flies when you're having fun. Thanks, Brittany and everyone from Asheville, North Carolina. And so, okay. And, oh, we have Marsha. Thank you so much for the tip this morning, Marsha. I really, really do appreciate it. Thank you so much as we wrap it up here. And so, um, I, can you refer to about Lady Louise and the Sussex title? She does not have the Sussex title. I don't know how that got started and that's not how it works. So she does not have that. So guys, we will go ahead and wrap this up here. Thank you so much for tuning in and sticking with me despite the technical difficulty I had there for a second going back too far. So guys, thank you so much. Have a wonderful Saturday with friends and family, and I will see you next week. Bye.